I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit If it moves, gotta grab it, fuse like a magnet Lose, won't have it till I'm doomed in a casket I ain't playing, got a weird mind If you work eight hours, I'ma work nine If the shit tastes sour, you should taste mine I'ma stay in power for a long time Get up, nah, I ain't a quitter Toss me the ball, I'm a really big hitter Big picture, I'm a straight killer Where I send the song to the highest bidder Got juice, got gas, I'ma move fast New shoes, new tracks, like who's that? I'm new, come back, better than last Yeah, it's a new me, never gonna look back Never gonna look back Cause damn, I was built to last You move slow when I move fast And that's facts Only I can make a change Slowly take a step today I will never be the same Cause that's what it takes Alright guys, happy Thursday, April 11th You made it one day to go to the weekend We're gonna do a quick little stock talk tonight Go over some different tickers Answer your questions uh, a little bit different format tonight because uh, just uh, it's been hard to get a hold of some people. So I have myself and Mediocre Trader. We might have some other guests pop in. Invites are out. And uh, if you want to pop in and say something, let me know and I'll shoot you over an invite. Let's see. OTF in the house. Fidget Spinner. What's going on? Jedi Master J. Good evening to you. Without further ado, guys, let's bring in Mediocre Trader. Also known as the Monkey Tamer. What is going on, my friend? What's up, buddy? How are you? I'm doing swell. It's funny stuff. You got your drink and your smoke for tonight? This is a adults channel, by the way. We we you don't, you know, if you're offended by a pipe or a cigar, you might want to turn off the live stream right now. Cause we are winding down a very long day. You got a drink. I've I'm drinking a uh Russian Imperial Stout tonight. Nice. Der Commissar. What's mm. up, OTF? How you doing, Mike? Good night, how are you? Say Looper 31, how you doing? I'm going to put some uh, tickers up on the screen here, Mediocre, while folks are uh, coming in to the chat so we can have something to look at here. What we have here up on the screen in the top left, AMC, top right, Highcroft, which soared today again, has been on a, an absolute tear for the uh, past week or so with the price of gold. Yeah. Let, me, let me go to the hourly on that or even the daily. Look um, at that. It's uh, um, up from 197. It hit 450 today. Shills are in shambles over Highcroft. Uh, it's nice to see that one moving up. AMC obviously still under pressure due to the dilution. We'll talk about that probably a little bit tonight. Uh, GameStop got a little bit of a bump today. Is it just today? Let's look at the daily here real quick. I'm just putting these up so we can see where we're at. Yeah. Yesterday was kind of like uh, I was looking... I was almost going to do a TA update video yesterday, but this was a very indecisive candle where we ended yesterday. <clears throat> and uh, it would it was too hard to say if it was going to go up or down today. So I might do a TA update on GameStop tomorrow after market close, but a, a nice push up today. Yeah, Rolf and I were talking about that uh, an hour and a half or two ago, you know. Worry about the GameStop? All right, well, we're going to come back to all these so you can – Fill us in. I, I didn't hear y'all's discussion, so I'm curious what was said. And then, uh, of course, we have the spy in the bottom right here. And uh, the markets were kind of shit this morning, but they had a nice push up into the, the latter half of the day. Brazil, good evening to you. Bob, what's going on? Slide Derm, good evening, sir. Um, let's talk, let's start off talking about, well, let's get the easy ones out of the way, mediocre. Um, let's talk about Highcroft, GameStop, and then, then AMC. 
uh, I'm, I'm watching Highcroft uh, with interest for a variety of reasons, right? There's Diane Garrett was just in Zurich at a gold forum uh, with some comments about what's going on at Highcroft. So we're kind of watching it like we know that the pre-feasibility study is coming out at some point later this year. And that's really, you know, my expectation is we'll, we'll likely hear something about what, what is going to happen to Highcroft after that is published. However, she did say that they uh, are planning on addressing the debt. And she said, stay tuned for more info on that. That kind of leaves it open to interpretation. Like, what the heck is she talking about? Does that mean uh, that they're going to have dilution? Does that mean they're, someone's going to restructure the debt? What does that mean exactly? Uh, but the interesting thing is, as gold prices continue to push up and silver, it makes the project Highcroft Mine much more economically viable uh, and so that's why the stock is pushing up. And then, of course, you get the little uh, meme hype, options trading, FOMO, all of that going along with it, pushing it up even more. And uh, I don't know. I mean, the this quarter will be over. We started April 1st around $2.50. So uh, the reason I'm looking at that, if it could stay high all the way through Q2, April, May, June, to the end of June, then AMC would see a uh, fair value adjustment, a uh, positive to the income statement in Q2. But end of June is a long ways away. So way too early for me to be commenting on, on Highcroft relative to how it could affect AMC, just in terms of the stock price. So I'm just kind of looking at it as, as its own entity and trying to figure out what is Highcroft management likely to do. I know they've met, they've dropped a lot of hints, guys, that they are incentivized to de-risk the company and to fix the balance sheet. You Hopefully you know that if you're playing Highcroft. They've made, <laughs> I feel like we have this conversation in every stock, mediocre. Yeah. They're not making it a secret that they're going to fix the balance sheet. Read between the lines. Because you guys, I don't know why everybody doesn't want to hear what management is saying. There's only a couple things they can do. And What did uh, Diane Garrett say again? She said that they intend to fix the balance sheet, that the uh, lenders have asked them to de-risk the balance sheet. When did she say that? She said it in March at the investor forum, and she uh, mentioned again in Zurich this just a couple days ago that they were going to do something about the debt. And so uh -huh. my mind immediately jumps to the most obvious thing is uh, tapping the equity market. And the higher this price goes up, the more likely I think they're going to be tempted to uh, sell some shares. What do you think? I think that uh, she said what she said. And, she said uh, what she said. I would, I would not take that lightly. I'll say that. How's that? And then I'm not being a, you know, I'm, I, don't, I would, we, I would. We not, want Highcroft to succeed, right? We want Highcroft to succeed because that benefits all AMC shareholders and all Highcroft absolutely. shareholders. We want the mine to succeed, but we also want to talk about making sure you have the, the safest trading strategy. If you're trading it, I have no position in Highcroft. Nor do I. And so I, we're just giving you what we know. I don't even want to go into detail on it, to be honest. In my opinion, you know, I just, uh, just don't want to see people get hurt. That's all. And if you're, if you're playing it and it's moving up, especially if you have options, um, never forget taking profits is not going to be frowned on by anybody. I won't frown on anybody for taking profits. I'll tell you that you could take that to the bank. But if you want to, you want to roll the dice and let it keep going, then uh, you know I I will say prayers for you and and wish you all the blessings in the world. And uh, I love to see people make money. So let us know how it goes if you're trading that. Uh, let's move into GameStop. Um, uh, kind of down day yesterday, uh, up 
day today. Larry Ching bought 10,000 shares. I heard that. Which uh, people thought were was going to be bullish momentum yesterday, but CPI squashed that. Yeah. And then but we it had recovered today. So, I mean, yeah, it, it did have a little bit of recovery with the market. You can see uh, the spy here. Let me go to the hourly. The It's almost a, a mirror of the spy here on the right. Yeah. So it followed the market, which is good. I mean, it, it didn't have breakaway negativity. But let's put it on our TA window here. And then I want to hear what you and Rolf were talking about. So here is my TA uh, falling wedge pattern that I'm watching for GME. Uh, this red line here that I have on the $10 support, that's a very weak support line. You could pretty much just ignore it because the only touch points back in 2021. Um, what I'm really watching for, for me, if I'm going to get back in GameStop is two things. Uh, number one, that management uh, announces some strategic change. Something that just blows people away and says, oh, we got to we gotta own GameStop. If I hear that, then uh, I will get back in. The Until then, I'm going to be expecting... Uh, based on the the earnings uh, and the PE ratio 513, forward PE ratio of 1,129, uh, that this price is going to continue down in this channel for for weeks. That is my expectation. If management doesn't say anything, so when we get close to a touch point on the bottom of this wedge, then I I will consider taking a little gamble for a bounce back up to the top of the wedge. Cause you see all these times, every time it hits the bottom, it's usually around the earnings. It bounces up. And I've, I've been telling you guys, I've been playing these earnings bounces for a long time for almost two years and it, it works out well. So we, we will see, you know, it might be three months to, to the next earnings where we finally hit the bottom and then get a little bounce on earnings excitement. Although Q1, how excited, can people really be about Q1 earnings for GameStop? We'll see. I'm not negative on GameStop in general. I want the company to succeed. I just haven't exactly. seen what I need to see to tell you it's a, a great long-term investment yet. And I know people are focused on the balance sheet. Uh, they're focused on price to sales ratios. I, look, if you're cherry picking one metric to be positive about and ignoring all the rest, I think that is a disservice to everybody. Uh, maybe this weekend we'll do a, uh, a uh, live stream breakdown with a real CPA talking about some other metrics that we're looking at uh, because cash on the balance sheet is just not enough. That's not enough to sustain this price. What uh, what did you and Rolf think about GameStop? What, what was y'all's conversation, Mediocre? Well, before we get there, you know, I hope that GameStop could get an uh, exclusive deal um, with some gaming companies, you know, some – some uh, makers of, of games like Rockstar and stuff. But uh, now Rolf and I were just talking about uh, if we thought it could make it back up to 11 uh, for close tomorrow, you know, because tomorrow is Friday. Mm. What's the uh, max paint? Did y'all look at that? I didn't, but I can quickly. I got it right here. Let me see. Where did you go? Jersey you? Recycler, while you're looking that up, he says other good mining stocks that have performed well are AGF, SM, HL, CDE, and POS. Are you talking about uh, performed well in just the past couple days? I have a whole mining uh, watch list here. Let's see if I have any of those. Oh, I have junior mining companies uh, because I, I wanted to compare some of them. Maybe we'll do that when, we're, when Mediocre is done talking about GameStop here. I'm curious so, if the other junior minor mining companies are moving like Highcroft. So Go it ahead. says uh, Max Payne here. I'll share the screen with you. Hang on, let me find it in this window here. So many tabs, it's not even funny. But it's 11 bucks. Um, okay. I get that from MaximusPayne.com. 
you could get it from uh what's the other one tony can't think of the name of it there's so many with similar names mediocre uh the the Mayor match main websites right here all right so 11 well, bucks that's what it's saying so and we we track that to be accurate what about 90 percent of the time yeah i also look at uh, something else in there the volume and stuff like that but let me see where it's at i'll tell you where that's at i don't know if it's going to be uh precise or not but <clears throat> just i mean from an overall ta perspective mediocre i have the the mac d and the rsi on here as well as all of the moving averages in the VWAP, you know, stuff we normally look at. There's not much bullish on here, but the the MACD is within within a day or so of potentially showing uh, some bearish change, but it it's uh, it still hasn't crossed over quite yet. So you could take a gamble that we're in a, a little low. Yeah. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're in a, a bottom for the moment, but uh, it's still too indecisive for me. Yeah. So, I mean, I was just looking at that too. It looks like it, you know, right now you got the, uh, a lot of volume at 1152. So who knows? It could go up past 11 somewhere. I don't really know if it does or not, but I'll look at it tomorrow. Grandpa Barney, you want to join us? Uh, if you do, if you want to come in and chat, we'd love to have you come in and share a few words. The The invite is in the Discord bubble chat, Grandpa. Why are you come, trying to stir the pot, Grandpa? Come, come in and say hello at least, Grandpa. I like it. Um, all right, let's move on from GameStop because there's not much else to talk about uh, other than, you know, just follow the trend, guys. Be careful about I just about want to say to Jersey real quick, I did notice your comment about uh, swing trade and uh, HYMC. I like it, you know. Yeah, I wish I wish I would have, you know, bought some HYMC at the bottom, but I did not. Uh, mediocre. Some people think we grab every trade at the bottom and sell every single one at the top. Is I that wish true? that was the case, Tony. <laughs> I wish that was the case, yeah. yeah. I, I did not grab HYMC at the bottom. <laughs> I, ha I have no position, so I am cheering you guys on from the sidelines, anyone who's in that play. Yeah, I wish I was, uh, you know, that perfect. I could get every play at the bottom, Tony. That's just not true. But I do manage my position well. I'll say that. We are uh, – we are degenerate assholes about trying to catch the bottom on stuff. And uh, as as many of my Discord viewers know, I will wait months and months and months to catch the bottom on something. Uh, so you hear me talking about sometimes, yeah, I, I bought the bottom or I bought near the bottom and I, I sold on the run-up. Number one, let, there's just two rules, guys, two rules. Number one, be patient. Number two, learn to read the chart so you can – safely identify when something is bottoming out patience is the biggest of those and then number two to have this trading style you have to fucking be willing to sell uh people get mad at me oh he said he bought at the bottom and sold at the top yeah because i was willing to sell and i'm reading the chart seeing where it's topping out and i sold now, i don't know why everyone gets so mad about that Grandpa Barney, thank you for the comment, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> Grandpa Barney said, both of y'all are assholes. <laughs> we love you too, Grandpa. I just wanted Grandpa to come on and say hello so I could play his his little intro I prepared for him. All right, we're going to look at some other stocks. I'm going to let Mediocre... And I see the tickers y'all are calling out in the chat. We'll come back to those in a minute. But I want to uh, let Mediocre talk about AMC for a second while I light my cigar. Let me put AMC up here. And uh, in a second, after Mediocre is talking, I'll put up my uh, spreadsheet on the dilution status. Go ahead, Mediocre. 
we hit that 14 million volume today. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show that yeah. on the spreadsheet. We modeled out 14 to 16 million volume every day for the rest of this month. And surprise, surprise, yesterday was 16 million and today was 14 million. OTF uh, D says, what's up? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, no, I don't know. I mean, what I was doing today, uh, I was I was doing some math on the uh, on the float um, in the market cap, and I kind of realized that uh, we're we're trading at two eighty, and we're kind of in that range based on market cap. Like everybody, and if you if you figure out and you add shares that are being diluted, right? Like they're not added into the to the float yet. That's part of the problem, right? You can't see the shares that are being sold in. So that's where you get a lot of crazy numbers, just that and the other thing, I I believe anyway. So for me, I uh, I just added those in and checked what the float would be at this price. And guess what it turned out to be? One billion. So, I mean, we're, I think that that's what they're trying to do, in my opinion. You know, so what are you going to do? Just got to pay attention to everything, right? So uh, let let's can you fill folks in on the the option strategies that the the bulk of the people that we talk to every day have in play for this week, <clears throat> and and let's just kind of do an update of where we're at because we we put a lot of different strategies in play on Monday or Tuesday, and where we think those are going to end up tomorrow. Well, so it looks like. Uh... Our uh, our call contracts that we had sold are gonna be safe. We'll get to keep our shares at three bucks. We sold the three dollar call. And just for but, the just for those that were asking, some people came in my video comments and said, "Do you own any shares now? Did you rebuy your uh, AMC, Tony?" I, I have rebought. And in that same video where people were asking the question, "Do you own any shares?" I had said that I sold covered calls which means I own shares to sell calls against just so we're clear. Yeah. You have to own shares to sell calls. That's so we, we are selling covered calls with a $3 strike because we did not think it was going to go over three bucks by this Friday uh, due to the ongoing dilution. And if I look at the, uh, the premium, what the contract's trading for, for tomorrow it's trading at a penny already which means I already sucked out all the value out of that contract. So thank you for, uh, unless yeah, something, unless, you know, some stupendous news happens in the morning, we're probably safe on those, right? We, we get to keep both our shares and the premium. Yep. And we, uh, we also, uh, sold some puts, um, you know, so you get like, uh, between 11 and 15 cents. Some people got 15. I, I got, I got I, 11. I got 16 to 18 on mine. Yeah, see, so others got 15. I, I got 11 cents, but I was late to the game. Others beat me to the punch, and that's all, that's fine. You know, it's all good. It all depends on what moment in the morning or the day that you sold them, right? Because the, the put premium, cash secured puts is just so you guys – if you're just joining in, cash secured puts is our way to get an entry to buy the stock uh, at a price lower than what the, the current price is. If it yep. doesn't go there, we just get to keep the money. But if it goes there, generally we will take the stock. We'll buy the stock plus we keep the premium, which reduces our basis. Exactly. So, so for me, with selling a $3 cash secured put, for 18 cents, if I buy the stock on Friday, if I get assigned, my basis would be 282. Yep. So, yeah. So for me, I'm going to get exercise on tomorrow. Most likely I'll end up with the shares, which is fine. I'm okay with that because every time I buy shares cheaper than what the stock is usually trading at, I'm lowering my dollar cost average and uh, accumulating. So that is one of my goals at the moment, you know, some people may like it. Some people may not like it. I personally don't give a shit about other people's feelings, but you know, you're an asshole. I know I am. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to 
piss anybody off, but it's, you know, I trade for me and that's it. Let's put up the spreadsheet and kind of touch base where we're at with dilution. We got the two scenarios. I, I think we are all preferring that scenario two be the the actual one. Scenario number one is just that AMC sold or is selling 10% of the daily volume. And uh, if that is the case, they are way behind on getting close to $250 million. Maybe they're on strategy number one, scenario, scenario number one. Maybe they have no date in mind that they want to be finished by, and uh, they are just gingerly uh, selling shares. And, and so scenario one could be one possible outcome. Scenario two uh, is kind of our thought that they really, really want to get this done before the earnings call on May 5th. And you can see that if scenario two is true, uh, we have it modeled as they sold a very high amount of shares at a high price on the 28th and the 1st when the volume was well over 40 million shares. If that is the case, and then they dropped to 10% after that, so almost the same as scenario one, except they front loaded the first two days at a higher price. If that is the case, they're $193 million into finishing this dilution. So they're 77% done. The average price that they've received from the 28th to today is $3.38. And they, I have modeled here in, gr well, green is the actual, White is just assuming that the volume stays between 16 and 14 million per day, which is funny because I, I modeled this out and that's exactly what the, the volume was the last two days. Yeah, I put these happy. numbers in here four days ago. We had two low days, nine, nine million. And we we're like, Adam, you need to bump that volume up. If you want to finish by uh, May 5th, you need to bump that volume up. Yeah, what's I his, want higher volume, you guys. What's his lever mediocre to bump the volume up? What was that? What is Adam's lever to bump the volume up? Sell the shares at a lower price. That's right. the way to do it. So <clears throat> we we yeah. kind of I'm think of it like if point. he needs higher volume, he's going to need to be willing to sell for a lower price. That I know people I hate that. people hate to hear that. I hate to hear that. But if we had two days with only 9 million volume, they're not going to finish by May 5th with 9 million volume. So the price got dropped yes, yesterday and today. Uh, this is my estimate taking the average price of the day, looking at volume in the VWAP. So these are just my guesses, guys. This is not, yeah. no, one's, no one's guaranteeing anything here. We're just trying to share how we're looking at it, how we're modeling it. And we'll find out. Yeah, yeah, we'll exactly. find out if we're right or not. And we'll talk about it when it's done, when the when the 8K is done. But exactly. by our estimate, they're 193 million in at an average price of 338. And if the volume continues at 14 to 16 million, they will complete 250 million dollars. Oh, and a two percent price drop per day. I hope they don't have to do this. I yeah, hope they too. don't have to do this, but this is kind of like modeling worst case scenario. Okay. Worst case scenario, if no one's buying and he's forced to keep reducing the price to keep the volume high, he would finish by May 1st and AMC would be at 251 and he'll have his $250 million. I hope that it doesn't go to 250. I hope that it does not. I hope that people are willing to buy at 279, 280, 290. We'll be done well before May 1st, and we won't see anywhere close to 250. That's what I hope for. That goes back to what Mediocre was saying. It all depends on the volume that shows up every day, how AMC games getting this dilution done. I mean, there was two good articles. I mean, he, he basically said, without saying it in a press release without saying it directly but he basically said what i what i interpreted as bankruptcy is basically off the table for 2024 
that's kind of what I heard. I don't I don't know how we, other people took what what was said, but you know I don't know. And then the the volume doesn't come in. I I don't know what to say. You know it is what it is. He's going to sell the shares regardless. He needs the money. It really comes down to uh, what your thoughts are, any of you, if he has a certain date that he wants to get it done by. Like, I think, this is my opinion, he wants it done before the earnings call. So that's what that's how I am modeling it. If I'm wrong on that, if he's willing to sell them over six months, then AMC is not pushing the price down. I, I have to agree with Tony. I think he wants it done before uh, the earnings call. But here is my other here's my other prediction for tonight, mediocre. I think that this 250 million cash raise has something to do with the debt refinancing, debt restructuring. I think that the hint that he dropped about Chapter 11 being inconceivable. I think that that has something to do. <laughs> it has something to do with an upcoming announcement as soon as the 250 million is raised. And if I'm modeling out that he's going to be done by May 1st on the 250 million, and we know the call is going to be around May 5th. And I've already told you this mediocre. I'm just sharing this with, with YouTube. My, here's my bet. My bet is that we get a debt restructuring deal announced before earnings, even one hour before the earnings call or in pre-market the day of. But sometime between now and the earnings call, my bet is they will announce a debt restructuring. And my second bet would be that they will announce it after the $250 million raise is complete. Or they will announce them at the same time. But bottom yeah. line is I think they will announce it before the call starts. So they have positive shit to talk about. Uh, I have to agree with you. I think that's probably most likely scenario. That's why I think the way that I think with the uh, spreadsheet. You know, that's the only reason why. <clears throat> And if it doesn't go that way, well, then I'm just wrong. I'm, I'm sometimes wrong I'm sometimes wrong. But I, 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 I try and think like they think, and if I was them, that's what I would do. Doesn't It doesn't mean that it's going to be good for us. So the reason we're doing the modeling, we're, the reason we're doing these lives and sharing this info, just to give you guys a, a different look into perhaps how they're thinking, maybe a different look than what other people are saying. It doesn't mean that we're right. And uh, we'll only know when it's done. I'll say this. Some people may not care about their position and, and what transpires day by day because we're going to millions of dollars or whatever, you know, whatever they think. I don't, the reason why I care is because it's my money on the line and I want to protect my money every way possible I can. And, that's just a, that's just it, right? I got a family and uh, I'm not willing to give up my money that easily. <clears throat> uh, you, I apologize. Tuman Goosh says many people waiting for below $2. That That is another reason that we're sharing this. I know that a lot of people are calling for $1.50 below two bucks. Uh, it could happen, could happen. But based on the modeling that I'm doing, I don't see it going that low. The, and that's the reason I do the spreadsheets. That is the reason I do the modeling. Doesn't mean that my model is correct. You could have your own theories. I'm not going to argue with you. You could absolutely be correct. I'm trying to do the best DD I can for myself. To, yeah, uh, we do a lot of math. I, I'm not just throwing numbers out there based on emotion or because I hate the company. Uh, quite the opposite. I, I think that the rest of this year will be bullish and I would like to capture the lowest possible price. Hey, if it's below two bucks, I'd like to capture that price. But uh, I, I also need to know where do I think it's going to go? And I, I don't, I don't see it going below two bucks, but 
I've been wrong before, as I've said, so we will see. It's okay if I'm wrong, and it, you can come back and tell me I'm wrong. I'm telling you, I don't know for sure. I'm just making my best educated guess. The boys are in the chat tonight, Tony. <laughs> Owning the float says $2 won't happen. Well, he, he's not exactly what we'd call an AMC bull, and he's saying it won't happen. So thank you for adding that comment there, OTF. Chris says, Tony, would a debt restructuring news be big enough news to see the stock price start to recover? That is an excellent, excellent question, Chris. Something we talk about how many times a day, mediocre? I mean, we, we go over a lot of stuff. We talk about this stuff all the time. It's nonstop. Um, and it's not only AMC, but but specifically about this topic that you just brought up. We talk about a couple of times a day for sure. Because we want to know. People, I, I can tell you, people in our group have different opinions, which is cool. We we love different opinions. Uh, I'm going to tell you mine, and then Mediocre can tell you his. My uh, answer is, it is a coin toss, Chris, if it will be good enough news for the stock to recover in the short term, in the short term. So uh, there are people that are expecting a major pop up on debt restructuring news. I give that 50-50. And here's why. Not because I not because uh trying to be Debbie Downer, but because I don't know what the debt restructuring is going to look like. So it could be a straight restructuring. It could be a straight restructuring with a slightly higher interest rate. It could be a restructuring with convertibles added to it to get a lower interest rate. It could be a restructuring with uh, regular restructuring and uh, debt for equity swap. It could be a restructuring with convertibles and a debt for equity swap. There's so many paths that they could take and some of them could be dilutive and uh, really depends on, on how they do that deal. So I can't tell you with absolute certainty. And I said on one of my videos the other night, like that there's one thing that I lose sleep over, and I, I don't lose sleep over this. I don't have enough money invested in it to, to lose sleep over. That's called sizing your risk. This is a speculative play, and you should not be over leveraging. Uh, if I were to lose sleep over anything, it would be the fact that I don't know what the debt restructuring deal is going to look like, and I don't know how the market is going to react to it. But over the long term, Chris, if they get that debt pushed out, I think it's very bullish. So hopefully that answers your question. In the short term, what happens to the price depends on the nuts and bolts of the deal. Long term, I think it will be bullish. Mediocre, what are your thoughts? I mean, I, I agree with a lot of what you said. Uh, my thought is this. Um, as you know, I'm going to – I'm a trader. I want to get that out there first of all. So for me, um, I'm constantly trying to sell covered calls against my position uh, regardless. So I, I want to be able to – sell at a higher strike price, which allows me to collect, capitalize on that gain, right? So I don't want to move super fast to a, to a number. I'd rather it take its time getting there. But however it gets there, you know, I, I, I will protect my position that way. Um, but I think, I think it will be somewhat bullish, not necessarily because of the news, right? Just because the debt will be kicked out of the way, you know, for a few more years, whatever. But then we got good box office coming back. Like that is the most important thing to me is the box office. The amount of movies we're going to um, have the end of the year and into 2025 and 2026, right? And hopefully 2027 and beyond and, and really get them uh, back to profitability. But I, I'm in it for a recovery play, right? And I want to I want to capitalize on the recovery of AMC help them along the way um, and do that. So I think that it's possible. Uh, it, we get a nice little pop maybe 
I don't know, from here, maybe four bucks. I'm not going to say, you know, huge numbers, but if we could go to $4, that would make me happy. Um, would be good, good enough for me to let it gradually climb. But who knows what's going to happen? It might just go up there. I don't know. So that's my thought. <laughs> My models for uh, like 2026, you know, if the box office recovers and Hollywood puts out enough movies, uh, the price will be substantially higher than where it is right now. But I can tell you that like in our group, you know, and we, we talked about this at the beginning of this year, 2024 is a year of volatility trading for most of us that, that I talk to on a daily basis, because this is going to be a slow year overall, like eight eight to nine billion based on what we know now. <clears throat> so AMC is not going to make a profit for the year. And all we're trying to do is capture uh, some additional profits based off of the volatility, which is a little bit of a delicate dance of trying to be smart about getting in at the lows and being willing to sell on any move ups, knowing what is going to happen with the box office so we can kind of guesstimate what the top is for this year. And then later this year being positioned for a, a potential move up in 2025. So that would be buy the lows now, sell into any run-ups, trying to take advantage of some pushback down. If it gets, if it gets pushed up too much, wait for it to come back down and uh, use some of the profits we made to rebuy. Is that a fair assessment of, what our overall strategy is mediocre. Absolutely. Uh, Chris is asking, no, D Davey is asking about, uh, is next quarter going to be bad? I think dilution next quarter too. So another great question, Davey, I've already modeled out uh, every quarter for this year and uh, including Q2. I have Q2, uh, domestic box office coming in at about 2.3 billion. So that's the number I'm watching for April, May, June. And April's going to be slow. May's going to be better. June's going to be the strongest. So unfortunately, we're not going to have a great idea about how Q2 looks probably until early June, mid June. But based on 2.3 billion box office, the my my income statement analysis says that it will not be a bad quarter. It won't be a profitable quarter, but it's not going to be a. It's not a horrible one. It's minimal losses, a few pennies, minimal cash burn, and then Q3 we have a chance of making a profit. Q4, uh, I have estimates, but I, I need to go in and look at, at every single movie for Q4 and refine that. So I, I'm not going to talk about Q4 just yet. Yeah. People don't realize how much the box office matters, you guys. I think it matters more than uh, people want to lead on, right? And uh, we need movies. We need movies and, and butts in the seats. And you ain't going to get butts in the seats unless you got movies. And that's just, you know. For, for anyone who uh, was not on our earlier live stream earlier this week, I saw Civil War in IMAX on Monday. Highly recommend that movie. Uh, it was fantastic. See it in IMAX if you can. If you don't have an IMAX, uh, AMC, IMAX near you. Hopefully you have an AMC Dolby. It's a fucking fantastic movie. Uh, and then I was going to see Monkey Man on Tuesday. I had to reschedule that. And uh, so I, I will. I, I was going to go see it again today. I was, And then my wife ended up not having to work. So she's been here all day. I didn't go to the movie. I asked her if she wanted to see it. She was like, eh. So I will go see it myself or with her this weekend. And I have not seen Ghostbusters yet. So those are the two that I have upcoming that I need to get in. But uh, Civil War, I think you really like that one. And what else? You've been any, have you been any movies lately, Mediocre? 
I don't have an AMC in my area. I got to drive an hour and a half to a theater. That fucking sucks, man. Yeah, it does. So. I do not go to competitors, I'll tell you that. I haven't been to a competitor theater in three years that I can recall. I think uh, we went, we did try and go. There's one really fancy one here in the domain, which is not too far from me. I forget what it's called, but they have super luxury seats. They have blankets. They have a super fancy menu. They got popcorn with Parmesan truffle. Uh, they have games in the lobby and a, a, a beautiful bar. But, uh, and my wife really wanted to go to that theater. I was like, all right, we'll go to that one this one time. Mediocre, we ordered the popcorn when the movie, before the movie started, they brought it out to us like 15 minutes before the movie ended. Oh man, that ain't no good. Yeah. And you're paying a premium for this super luxe location. <clears throat> so I, I complained to the manager after it was over and he was just like, well, sorry. I was like, that's all you got? Sorry? No. You're an asshole. We're never coming <laughs> back here. And I told my wife, we are never coming back here. <laughs> AMC it is, baby. OTF got a comment for you, Tony. I like it. <laughs> is, it is it this one? You buy low and sell high? You mean you're not a diamond handing? You're not a true <laughs> ape? Yeah. I, I don't really use the word ape. <laughs> I did. I held a lot of shares, meet uh, OTF, from mid 2021 all the way to 2023 when hoping that we would get that second squeeze. And, uh, you know, I, I will never be read on AMC because before I started YouTube, I made a lot of money with call options on AMC. And yeah, I lost a little bit of money on AMC shares that I held after that, but I, I was just giving back house money. So don't cry for me. Uh, and then we we fix part of that with the ape buying cheap ape and selling it on the run up on the judge's decision. So, and we've been trading it. We've been trading it as I said this year, buying low, selling high. I did that before Q1, uh, and we're we're trying to get in and get the low here now. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. We will find out, won't we, Tony? But yes, Mike, OTF, if you want to make money in this play and you've been listening to people that have only been telling you to buy and hold, then uh, you're, you're probably feeling a little bit of pain. I don't give instructions like that. I don't sing songs that say all we do is buy and hold. I, I talk to you about what I think is going to happen. And like I said, if if I'm talking about it, you can... You can probably surmise that I'm following my own trading, you know, my own DD. I and personally, I don't care what anybody does with their position because it's your position. It's none of my business what you do with your position, to be totally honest. So I don't get mad at anybody for buying and holding or for buying and selling or for whatever. Whatever you choose to do with your money is your fucking business. God, I don't get it. <laughs> What's up, Doc Zeno in the house? How you What's doing, up, sir? The only people I really get upset with, mediocre, are the ones who uh, want to blame the company for their trading decisions. That that is, I don't, I'm not really mad at owning the float because he sold, right? That was his choice, and I don't think he's he doesn't like Adam Aaron. I get that, but. Uh, if I don't know if he made money or lost money, I don't even know that, but I don't hear him saying I hate AMC because they're a criminal organization uh, engaged in embezzlement, fraud, and RICO violations. Like, no, everything that happened to AMC has been fully disclosed in 10 Qs. And if, if you weren't reading those, that's on you. So don't blame the company for telling you, they did tell you that they're plan was to fix the balance sheet until they got profitable. I mean, Tony, how did you manage to avoid uh, all that uh, 
conversion reverse split how did i manage to avoid all the dilution was yeah. it just luck am i lying mediocre uh, no <laughs> i know a lot of people say he didn't avoid the dilution how does how does he always manage to get out right before dilution reading the documents listening to management it's not that hard uh, not listening to nut jobs not listening to people that don't read the filings. I, I don't listen to those people. I literally do my own due diligence and uh, I try and think like management is thinking that that is it. I mean, I can almost tell you per datum what some of those documents said. That's how much I burned it into my brain. Like it was ridiculous what was about to happen. And I, I told people too. I know Tony did because we had conversations and it, there was a, a lot of us, um, Pam even knows, Pam even knows, you know, I mean, I shared the information, Tony shared the information. So we tried to uh, inform people whether you, what you did is what you did. I can't control what people do. You know, neither can Tony. We, I protected myself. That's all I could tell you. Whether you like it or not, that's what I did. Even our good buddy, uh, Massalorian. Audio plug says, how come you don't have Massalorian on anymore? Not not by our choice. Uh, he has been traveling the world. Uh, I talk, I've talked to him twice in the past week or so. In fact, I talked to him right after I got out of the Civil War movie because he wanted to know what I thought of it. And uh, here's what he told me, his updated status. He is back in the U.S. He's settled in. He's working hard this week to get his documentary published by this weekend. And he wants to be able to start doing live streams next week. So that's what I know about our friend Massalorian. And I, I, all I told him is when you're ready, you know how to reach out and uh, we will we'll, we'll get you back on. I'm sure the people want to hear from you. So I think soon, I think soon. You can expect to see something from him. Let's see uh, what Stephen says. Stephen says, my favorite part was when they called AMC pre-collapse common shares. <laughs> Is that, was that in the company filing, Stephen? No, that was in the plaintiff's brief and defendant's brief the pre-collapse common shares they did call it that i forgot that <laughs> i read that line oh, yeah God. we we tried to share the information here on the live stream we shared it with other youtubers we shared it in other discords everywhere we could and then just left it up to people to to do their own dd and make their own decisions uh, we we did not try and pressure anybody to do anything it's not my job to tell you how to trade a lot of people are mad what well, tony you should be telling them amc is a horrible investment and that they're going to get diluted it's not my even if i told you that most of y'all wouldn't do it so unfortunately you're not going to get trading instructions from me i'm just going to tell you what i think we see is coming and I, I want you to know if i'm telling you stuff you can as i said you can Read between the lines that I'm acting on I that just, information. I just want you to tell me how to vote on the next proxy, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Watch that video. Did y'all watch that video? I put out a video yesterday uh, saying I'm going to I'm going to tell you exactly what I want you to do on the upcoming proxy. And uh, I spent 14 minutes sharing data from independent uh independent companies that advise institutions on how to vote on proxies. And basically it was 14 minutes of sharing information and giving people the links to go research themselves and not, uh, not be getting all their information from these backyard flat earth conspiracy theorists, go watch la the lawn chair lawyers. Uh, and all I got all day was people saying you, you're telling us how to vote. You told us not to vote for Prop 1. You told us to vote for Prop 1. You told us this. You told. I didn't tell you anything. I pointed you in the direction of the information. 
and asked you to do your own DD. That was my instructions. If you listen to the very end of the video, I said, I will never tell you how to vote. I'm not going to tell you how I'm going to vote. I don't give two flying fucks how you vote. You vote according to your conscience, but at least make sure that you understand what you're voting on, that you've read it yourself, that someone's not feeding you information or misinformation. There's a lot of great independent resources out there. Go watch that video. Check the links in the video description and then vote however you want. I honestly don't care. I don't freaking care. Tony, tell me how much you care. I couldn't give two flying fucks, mediocre. <laughs> but uh, it is it is just made my morning, made me laugh to see that people rushed out videos to call me a liar. He's telling y'all how to vote. <laughs> oh, boy. Hook, line, and sinker. Couldn't wait to clickbait his audience with misinformation. Either that or he's just not very good at listening comprehension. What do you think it is, Mediocre? Uh, you know, people have a lack of comprehension. I've noticed. <clears throat> a lot of a lot of people depend on my channel for their content, Mediocre. I've noticed that. It's, uh, it's interesting. It's interesting that they can't have something original to, to talk about or factual. Like, there were nine proposals on on uh, the proxy to talk about and someone made a video misconstruing what I said about one proposal. <laughs> didn't want to, he didn't want to dare dive into the other three, four and five because that would, that would countervene all of what the, the no voters are saying. Anyways, guys go do your own DD. That's all I care about. Make, make informed decisions. And then whatever you decide after that, I'm good with. If you told me I read the white paper and I know how I'm going to vote after understanding what's going on in the entire market in Delaware law, then uh, I say, God bless you. You can vote yes or no. I don't care. I just hate that people are getting information from, from conspiracy theorists. Misinformation on top of that. Tony, how often do we laugh all day long? All fucking day. <laughs> it's so funny, and Twitter's a funny place, man. I tell you that. I, I hardly say anything because I just I don't got the time to or the energy to deal with that stuff. It's just sometimes I do want to get amused by comments, but I just <laughs> it's too much. Twitter's been a, a bit crazy this week. <clears throat> I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to talk about that or not. If y'all know what's going on in Twitter this week in the AMC community, give me a thumbs up in the chat and we'll talk about it. If you don't, I don't really care to talk about the drama. I don't talk too much about it. I just brought it up just to say it's not it's not only Twitter, Twitter, it's everywhere though. You know, it's I don't know. Owning the float says mediocre, where is your cowboy hat? Are you a cowboy up there in the northeast mediocre or are you more of a, a baseball cap dude? I'm a baseball cap dude, you know. You want me to get one? I got one right here. I'll put one on. Well, yeah, owning the float is owning the float wants to see in a hat, I guess. <clears throat> Doc Zeno says, I just want to come around because I want to see the hairless kitty. I haven't seen that kitty in a while, Doc, since since we all last saw it. Uh, let's see. Michael says, Tony, you said you like buying at Lowe's and there are plenty of them. I, th I think based on my spreadsheet that we put up earlier, Michael, there is likely to be more Lowe's coming. So if you want to know how I'm trading, not financial advice, don't fucking copy my trades. I'm just a cowboy clown I that's uh, drinking live on camera and smoking a cigar, or as some people would say, a pipe. Uh, if you want to know what I'm doing, Michael, I'm keeping cash on the side. I bought some shares yesterday at 282. So I'm down two cents. <clears throat> and uh, mostly, and I have other shares, and I will be collecting more shares on Friday from the cash secured puts that I sold. We're likely to close under three bucks. Wouldn't you say that, mediocre? 
Uh, yes. So, I, say we are most so I have a substantial to... amount of shares that I'll be collecting on Friday. I'll get, I'll let those exercise. And, uh, you know, if we go down to 250, that's okay with me. My, my cost basis on all of my entire position will be around 282. I'm not too worried. I, I think that the upside from $2.50 to $2.80 is uh, the upside payoff is more enticing to me than the risk of us dropping below two bucks. That's how I'm viewing it. I don't know if I'll be right. Just a cowboy clown. But uh, that's how I'm playing it. Upside potential versus downside risk. That's always what you got to be thinking. That was a justice on in the back. Sorry. <laughs> I was paying attention to Oh, I still got the screen up. Steven says, that, that prior to dilution completion, do you see a firm taking a 5% position in AMC? I haven't thought about that, Steven. I don't know. What do you think? I was curious if uh, we might see like Vanguard uh, try to step in a little bit soon. Vanguard yeah. Vanguard and BlackRock, uh, if they're buying AMC, just to be clear, guys, they're buying for ETFs that they own. They're, they're not trying to uh, buy up a bunch of AMC to, for, the, for the intent of selling it short. <clears throat> they don't want a position in AMC, but they are required by the ETFs that they manage to, to buy AMC, to balance it in their portfolio. And once they own it, they will sell. They will sell those shares, lend them out. Sorry. Uh, Mike says, when did I start wearing hearing aids? These are just, uh, what do you call it? A headset, Mike. If I had my speakers on, you'd be getting an echo. Now, some of the flat earth conspiracy theorists, Mike, the ones that we laugh at, say that people are telling me what to say in my <laughs> ear because I, I don't know anything about investing but that is not true Hello. don't let him lie to you guys he's got a direct link to adam aaron <laughs> it just cracks me up what these nut jobs come up with but the best part of this play is the entertainment from the from the conspiracy theorists uh, i talk all day long with dozens or sometimes hundreds of people without my hearing the, my speakers in and uh i i can assure you nobody's telling me what to say nobody's nobody's giving me talking points everything you're hearing is my own dd you know i, I will say though um it's not about for me you know was i a ape or wasn't i a ape? yeah i held the stock i held it up to 72 let it come back. I was never underwater in the stock. I never would let myself do that, but that's just how I am. Right. Um, and I, you know, it, it's, it's tough. Right. But I was in it for the short squeeze and I, I was in it for the long run with a lot of people, you know, and I, I had a lot of friends that I kind of lost along the way, you know, not, not that I, I hate them people. I don't, I don't hate them. I just, we, we don't see eye to eye. We have a, difference of opinion and it's it is what it is you know that's just that's just the truth BLK. Car carlos is asking about blink charging let's put pull it up on the chart here for you carlos <clears throat> there was a time carlos where i was very bullish on all of the charging companies back in 2021 <clears throat> but Blink had a high of 59 bucks. It's now at 257. And I think some of that has to do with the fact that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the industry is moving to the Tesla standard. Let's look at their financials real quick.
Uh, net income in the most recent quarter was negative 19 million. Before that, negative 112, negative 41, negative 29. Let, let's pull up a different screen. It's much easier for me to give you a picture of what I look at. Uh, I have not looked at any of the management communications on blank. So we're just going to kind of do a quick walkthrough of their financials real quick. Revenues look good, right? That's good. Operating revenues, operating income, not so good. So they're making more money every year, but they're losing more money on an operating basis. Net income, same situation. Shares outstanding, massive dilution. All right, so th those are all not very good things. <clears throat> Balance sheet, they have, let me zoom in. Total current assets, 221 million. Total current liabilities, 69 million. So they have positive working capital. Total debts, only 17 million. That's not a horrible balance sheet. Uh, in fact, it's it's quite good, but I would guess based on that seeing that share count grow that they've been diluting shareholders to get keep cash on the balance sheet. Cash flow statement. Free cash flow keeps on getting worse. I mean, th this is not the best company. It would be my 60 second analysis. Would you invest in it, Tony? I would not. <laughs> you gotta, I mean, if the, if there's some point where you think, you think you can jump in and grab some blink at the point where management is about to turn the company around, then I say, if you're doing that level of DD, then go for it. But, I would need to read through 10 Qs and look at management strategy. I'd need to listen to at least the last couple earnings calls. And I'd need to take a look at the lay of the land for charging stations and convince myself that Blink has a chance of gaining market share. And I don't have time to do that on a, a live stream like this, but that's what I would do next if I was thinking about buying it. Just based on what I just saw, in 60 seconds, I I would stay away from this company unless I could convince myself that there's a turnaround coming, imminent. I think ChargePoint's in the same boat, guys. And I used to own ChargePoint and I dumped it. Like I said, I, I there was a time where I thought that owning charging stations was smarter than owning EVs, but... Look at this. They're just getting obliterated. $49 no. down to $1.50. Let's, uh, let's do the same quick look at ChargePoint. In fact, I've done videos uh, a year or two ago on ChargePoint, hoping that it could be something I could talk with you guys about, but I had to sell it. It was just, they weren't getting better. <clears throat> Revenue going up. Operating income, it's just fucking same shit as Blink. <laughs> this is not what you want to see. Net income, horrible. Outstanding shares. Uh, there was substantial dilution in 2021 and then a little bit more every year after that, probably to keep on bringing in cash in the company. Let's compare their balance sheet to Blink. 357 million in cash, total current assets, 742 million, total current liabilities, 330. So yeah, their balance sheet's okay. Positive shareholders equity, positive working capital, cash flow, operating cash flow is getting worse every year. So yeah, not a great story here either, unfortunately. I, I wish I had better news, but in 60 seconds, I I don't like what I see.
I didn't even have the screen up on any of that, did I? Did I have it up for Blink Mediocre? Not for Blink, no. I know I didn't have it up just now for Charge Point. Did I have it up for Blink? You had it up for Char- uh, Blink was the first one. Charge Point was the second one. I'll just tell you, uh, Charge Point looked exactly like Blink. Okay, oh, yeah. Bad story. Yeah. On in the float wants to know what's your favorite food, Tony. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's mean a smart ass. Well, I mean ribeye. Ribeye and then lasagna, I, I would guess. I like fucking chicken tenders. <laughs> 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 Look at Mara uh audio plug says. High of 83 bucks in 2021, low in 2022 at the end of the year of $3, currently trading at 17 as uh, cryptos push up, but they've been getting smacked a little bit as uh, the havening encroaches. Let's go to a quarterly view on Mara. Revenue skyrocketing. That's what you want to see. Operating income. It's been shit, absolute shit until this last quarter <clears throat> where they made 256 million operating income and a positive, they've had a positive net income the past two quarters. <clears throat> I've stayed away from Mara uh, for a the past couple of years because of these problems that they've had, but it looks like at least for now they turn the corner uh, shares outstanding. There's been ongoing dilution operating margin 163%. So they, they turn that around as well in the most recent quarter balance sheet. So that, I mean, this is, it, it's a, they're showing signs of a turnaround. And uh, I guess if you're investing in Mara, you got to think about what's going to happen after the having, or as I call it, the havening. Total current assets, 1 billion total current liabilities, 33 million. Wow. That's a pretty fucking strong balance sheet. Very nice. Cash flow, operating cash flow. That's their weak area. Negative operating cash flow. But yeah, I mean, there's there's some things to like about Mara. As long as you have a good understanding about what's going to happen when the having takes effect. See, I, I try to stay away from stocks like that. I look at stuff like... CSX, which you've looked at for me before. Um, Is that a railroad? Yeah, it's that railroad company. You know, <clears throat> stuff like that. Dividend stuff that has a little bit of volatility. You got to worry about it too much. Options chain. I'd, I'd just rather, as we've talked about with Mara and some of these other mining companies, the, the crypto mining companies, I'd rather buy Bitcoin. Uh, I know that the mining companies outperform Bitcoin in terms of returns when they're going up. That's indisputable, but they also outperform to the downside when, when crypto is falling. <clears throat> so I'd rather just buy Bitcoin and take all the risk off the table, but that's just me. And uh, I have no problem with anybody that wants to play crypto mining companies. There's some, there's some good money to be made if you're playing it smart. Yeah, Pam, that uh, DJT, I mean, I like that, but I just, I'm trying to figure out what's up with that myself. Isn't it, isn't it getting obliterated lately? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Ouch. 
<clears throat> it broke through all of this support right here. What do you see? What do you see when you see a chart like that, mediocre? What do you think? Uh, I try to stay away from it. <laughs> it hurts. That's that's hurt right there. And I, you know, I don't want that stock to be there. Believe me, I don't want that stock to be there, especially that one. But uh, yeah, we're <clears throat> we're big fans and personal friends of Donald J. Trump, so we would like to see this company do well. We're about to have a 1348 cross here on the daily mediocre, mm. uh, which is if that happens is not going to portend well for this stock. <clears throat> Hopefully we get a, a recovery bounce right here. It could just, you know, start trading sideways right here. Hopefully if, people. If, if it, if it's has another day or two of red, you could see $24 in the, in the near future. based on the 200 MA. Uh, I kind of view these social media companies like, look, they went to the capital markets to raise money and they raise money. <clears throat> this company is not making money and probably won't for several years. So it was a momentum play and congrats to everybody who made money on the way up. <clears throat> but you got to have an exit plan when it comes down, guys. <clears throat> and your exit plan should have been at least in the first two days. If you're, if you're still holding now, you know, <clears throat> maybe it'll turn around here. Uh, a lot of this play rides on Mr. DJT himself, right? And what happens in the election. So I can't tell you <clears throat> just by looking at a chart, how, uh, how the public is going to, support or not support this play but looks like the the bears and the fear are in control at the moment and uh maybe maybe some good trump news will turn this thing around if not i see 24 dollars in its future yeah it doesn't look good We made a lot of money back in the day on DWOC. I did not play the, the DJT play, but man, I sure wish I would have. Some, some fucking badass returns, $17 to 80 bucks. Holy shit. I need to, I need to quit concentrating on meme stocks, mediocre and pay more attention to shit like this. <laughs> CSX <laughs> no DJT like that would have been a, a good play for us to be playing the, the past oh, month yeah. oh yeah yeah I think Doc Zeno is Doc Zeno in the house did you make some money on that play I mean that play stuff like that scares me a little bit it's uh it gets too you know too emotionally charged, you know what I mean? Like the news and stuff like that. That's kind of why I exited DWEC. I, I just, it was too much, too, too political, too. I just didn't want to be involved with it. Super Steven said Highcroft is going to look worse than the DJT chart soon. <laughs> <laughs> that is why they call you the bad ape, Steven. Oh how how dare you? <clears throat> how dare you say that, Stephen? So uh, hi, we talked about this in the beginning of the live stream. Highcroft is running with gold. Gold hitting all-time highs. I saw someone in the chat earlier say gold just went over 2,400. Uh, it's at all-time highs. That's pushing Highcroft up. The economic viability of the Highcroft mine improves the higher gold and silver prices go. You have... Meme stock players and options traders and FOMO players pushing this stock up. You also have shorts coming in hot on this play at 450. I can guarantee you that. I've already seen them talking about it. So where does it go from here? I don't know. Uh, and I'd love to see it go higher. But if, if I was a gambling man, this push up 
will only be supported if gold keeps moving up. And if gold flattens out or start, starts coming down, you're going to see this price uh, tumble. So keep a close eye on gold. It'd be what I would say. I hope it breaks 10 bucks for all of you guys. I, I, that would be beautiful. And then the, the other thing that we're worried about is, uh, is Ms. Diane Garrett announcing some dilution because she has clearly said that she wants to fix the balance sheet. And if you're ignoring that, like you ignored Adam Aaron saying it, then uh, you only have yourself to blame if, if there is an announcement tomorrow after market close. I mean, how does he, how does he know that it's going to be tomorrow after market close? It's in his ear. Someone, someone's <laughs> telling you. <laughs> Uh, tell them when all the news is posted, Tony. <laughs> That's just my guess. I mean, what what the fuck do I know? Tony, let me ask you a question. This is this is a real question, though. When was all the um, the court documents post posted uh, for the AMC court case? When was the majority of those posts posted? Oh man. You mean like the discovery documents? Yeah, remember we would have the conversations? I mean, a, a couple, many months before the actual judge's decision. What? Where are you going with this? It was Fridays after close. Oh, okay. How many times? <clears throat> You know what I uh, I did a little bit of uh, backwards due diligence, mediocre, just just for fun. Do you know when they disclosed what they were they were going to do with issuing the ape? A lot of people say they sprung it on us. That no, uh, I, yeah, I seen that document. Uh, you did you actually did a video on it not too long ago. June 30th, 2021 is when they started adding new risk factors into the 10 Q saying you're going to be diluted with preferred shares. That was a new risk factor one over a year before it happened, guys. When I tell you to read the filings and I tell you to read the risk factors, you no, should we have, missed we missed it. Yeah. You should have every risk factor. I Look, have every risk factor memorized. And when you see a new one, you should be like the, the, the groundhog or the ground squirrel or whatever the fuck. <laughs> what is, new risk factor. What is he trying to telegraph? Here? Look guys, as soon as they started having board meetings, as soon as they started having board meetings with Derek Van Zant talking about doing, the ape a year before they did it, they started disclosing it to us. I'm sorry. I missed it. I'm sorry. I didn't tell you about it. I didn't, I didn't notice. I wasn't even thinking a year out. I wouldn't, I know now that AMC models their cash flow two years in advance. If I had known everything I knew, you know, if I knew then what I know now, I, I would have played a lot of things differently, but we learn a lot every month that we're in this play, every document we read. I think so, that's uh, why now we do much better, Tony. Yeah, you know. now now our accuracy rate of predicting moves is increased, which is why I still play this stock. The, the more accurate you can get predicting what's going to happen, the more likely you're, you are to be successful. But uh, yeah, they disclosed the ape preferred units uh, more than a year before they did it. And it's on all of us for not seeing it. I didn't know about it and it was there. So audio plug, yeah. I'll tell you uh, actually Tony's Discord is free as long as you're a member of his YouTube channel.
Audio plug says I sold Highcroft a little early, but some is better than none. Yeah, no one ever got their feelings hurt taking a profit. Audio plug. The only ones crying are the ones in any play who neglected to hit the sell button. But uh, just to be clear, I would love to see Highcroft run up to 10 bucks. I just don't know that I don't know that it has the gas to get there. Mediocre, we were looking at the shares out uh, the shares authorized for Highcroft. Do you remember what the number was? I told you they have a Thank you. they have Absolutely. a shares outstanding right now of 21 million. Do you remember what the authorized shares is? Absolutely, I do. Can, can you share them? that with our audience? Yeah. Uh, it's over 1 billion shares authorized. <clears throat> 1.4 billion to be exact, authorized. Now, are they going to Are they going to drop an ATM offering selling a billion shares? No. No, they're not going to do that. But uh they have a filed shelf offering. There's a shelf offering filed ready to drop a prospectus for a at the money offering or a uh, a private placement at any point that they decide. So that's that's what I worry about. I want to see Highcroft push up. I'd love to see all make money, but I'm scared to death about an upcoming ATM. Audio Plug says, what are you guys' thoughts on real estate and the current state of the economy? Uh, in general, I'm bearish on real estate while interest rates are high. And you guys have probably seen the, <clears throat> the articles about commercial real estate properties being flipped for a fraction of what they sold for a few years ago. It's just a bloodbath out there right now. Yeah. It's just, everything's, everything's priced too high and, you know, interest rate rates alone is going to kill you. And that's the problem. So, John's Day Trades got a great question here, and I'm going to let Mediocre answer it because uh, he's going to be brutally honest with you, John. Let me find What's this question. <laughs> he says, <laughs> Now, with the knowledge and experience, do you think that AA sent mixed messages to retail? Uh, um, <laughs> listen i'm gonna say he he did his job for the company do i agree with what he did not necessarily right like uh i met the man in person i'll tell you that okay i had a gimbal a phone all set up i had cue cards i was ready i actually have the gift cards right here somewhere but uh i'm just gonna tell you um it wasn't until after um, when I got back from meeting with him, because I, I met with him just before conversion reverse split. So what I'll say is it wasn't until after I met with him when I realized why he didn't want to do like a somewhat of an interview. He, he basically called it an interview. It wasn't really an interview. I had cue cards with like five or six questions I wanted to answer on video, but he, he I had cue cards, it. a gimbal and microphone with a dead cat on it, but it wasn't an interview <laughs> and some fucking pretty <laughs> tough questions. Okay. That although he did answer all the questions and he answered them truthfully, I'll tell you that they were truthful. Um, but there was one thing that stood out for me and, I'll, and I'm going to tell you during the conversion, uh, the whole court case thing, uh, the settlement, there was, you know, they were offering seven and a half shares for every one share you own to AMC shareholders. Okay. And he looked me dead in the face like this and he goes, you want those shares, don't you? Okay. Now I do a lot of math. Like a lot of this stuff is math and understanding the language and what the fuck is going on. Right, Tony. And so we were doing a lot of math. And even though you got those seven and a half shares, it did nothing to help you. That's just the truth. And I I gave this information to people. So do I think that 
he um got over on people. I don't I think that his tour was to uh you know make people feel comfortable. He needed you to hold your AMC shares. He needed people to do those types of things. He did, right? It's not his job to tell you it's a bad investment. He put it in the 10Q. It's in the in the documents. It's there. There's All like the four there. there's like four pages of bold statement risk factors saying you will probably lose money on this trade. Exactly. And I'm not I, I'm just telling you what I noticed and I found that information to be accurate and true. And so I didn't like the fact that he went out on a tour like that. Knowing now, like I disagree with what he did. I understand why he did it. And I understand that retail got hurt. Believe me. I'm not saying that, that in any way. Right. But the information was there and I shared the information. I know Tony shared the information and whatever. I, there's nothing I could do about what I, it's already done and passed. So I'll just say that. So do I think that, uh, what was the actual question again? His question was, uh, do you think AA sent mixed messages to retail? He did by, in my opinion, he did in a way to be buddy, buddy, right? Uh, because he needed people to hold the stock. That's my opinion. Okay. My truthful opinion. Now, some people don't agree with that, but that's my opinion, right? And I know I, I understand why he did it. His job, he has a fiduciary duty to the company and the shareholders. If he didn't do that and people didn't hold the stock and he didn't dilute the shares, the company is going to, to zero and everybody loses their money. He can't let that happen. People lose their jobs. He has a fiduciary duty. And 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 you guys might not agree with that. I, I can't help what you guys think fiduciary duty means. You know what I mean? <laughs> say that. We've had there's been a lot of debate on that meaning, mediocre, but yeah, I agree with you that his duty is not to bankrupt the company and wipe everybody out, both common and uh, bondholders. Right. So he's gonna he's going to tell you about the fact that if we can raise money and if box office grows, that the company is going to survive. I think if you read between the lines of what he said, that that was truthful. But the problem was people took what he said and decoded it into different meanings. And there's a lot of videos and tweets out there where you can find people decoding things to mean more than what he said. We don't do that here. What I've always told you guys is that the CEO's job is to market the company. His job is to market the company. I have a video from a year ago called Trust No CEO. Everyone says, oh, Tony, Tony's a Adam Aaron fanboy. Go watch Trust No CEO and tell me I'm a fanboy. I don't trust any of them. I understand what their job is. Their job is to save their company from bankruptcy. Your job is to read the filings, read the 10 Qs, and uh, then decide what risk you're willing to take. Because they absolutely disclosed in writing in SEC filings what was likely to happen and what their strategy was, which was to fix the balance sheet. And here's, uh, here's another. Yeah, he, he went out and did all the handshaking and stuff because he needed us. And I think he 100% believes that the company is not going to go bankrupt. I think, I think his statement today or yesterday is true. Like he doesn't believe that the company is going to go bankrupt or he wouldn't have said it. And, and by extension, everything he said, like the shorts are going to be screwed. That ultimately is likely to come true. <clears throat> it's our job in that whole timeline between when he started that tour in 2026 to make our own best choices based on what we know about the balance sheet and the box office 
to decide if we want to stay in the play or not. Exactly. But I'll say this, um, and I'll ask Tony a question on the, kind of on this topic. What what are the equity markets for, Tony? Companies go to the public markets to raise money, to have access to capital. They what raise money the, on an uh, IPO. They raise additional capital as needed through uh, additional offerings. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is any stock that we're invested in, any equity that we're in, um, we are we are the the market. We are where they can tap the equity. That we're the equity people. Our dollars that we put in there is the equity that they're tapping when they say that. You know, and so that's what the market is there for. They didn't come on the market, they weren't publicly traded because we're part owners. So if they're not doing well, they're going to take money from us. If people just think it, it, it's only a place to make money. That's not necessarily the case. You need to know what's going on with the companies we're putting our money into. Uh, Jeffrey says, is AMC considered a value stock here at 280? That is a good question, Jeffrey. <clears throat> I, I would restate it as... Uh, is AMC close to fair value? And I had people in my comments, Jeffrey, in the last couple of days saying, uh, Adam Aaron <clears throat> destroyed the price from 93% from $70 down to two bucks. <clears throat> and they feel like they were robbed. But I mean, can we be honest for a minute with ourselves? Mediocre. Do you think that at any point AMC being non-profitable, was ever worth $70 a share? No, it was never worth $70 a share. It was worth what it was in 2019, maybe in 2020, the first quarter before the uh, before COVID hit. Then it got decimated in 2020. And it, it, it became a recovery play, a speculative play. We had a massive run-up. Uh, even with no revenues, with rents being deferred, with uh, the revolving credit line being fully taken down, with, I mean, just absolute shit financials, the price skyrocketed. And, and how, I should how many, how many, I did 35x. <laughs> I mean, was, I didn't take advantage of it, did you, Tony? I mean, you did a little bit, but I, I made a lot of money in early June, absolutely. I didn't. I held with you guys. I'll admit it. It is what it is. That's right? why I started my channel, Mediocre, because Matt and Trey were not telling people to sell their fucking options. They were buying options as I was selling them. I was like, what you the know, fuck are you I, guys I doing? Just... What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I seen what GameStop could do on the short squeeze, and I didn't think it was over. I'll admit it. I thought we were going to squeeze again. It is what it is, guys, right? What's done is done. You can't unring the bell. But to, to get back to the heart of his question, is it a value play? <clears throat> I would never refer to a non-profitable company as a value play. When I'm look, this is me. When I'm looking for a value play, I'm looking for companies that have a long history of profits and increasing revenues that are out of favor at the moment because of some momentary thing going on in the market. And I can say based on the history of their earnings and the fact that the price has been decimated and the fact that due to my due diligence, I think that the earnings will recover, that it is undervalued based on future earnings. For me, that's a value play. Any company in my definition that is not profitable is only a speculative play. All right, so value versus speculative. That's where we're at. I would call AMC and do call it a speculative play. Is it close to a fair value right now? Very close. I mean, if you look at the market cap, the market cap is the market cap is very close to where we were uh, in COVID times with no income. So I, I think the market in general, the 
the shorts are pretty stupid at this point to heavily short this company unless they think two things. Unless they think there is more dilution coming because the company needs to raise more cash or unless they think that there is going to be no debt restructuring or that the debt restructuring would be very unfavorable. So you still see shorts piling into the stock. Some of them clearly think that. I don't agree with them. I think we're on the cusp of a turnaround, but that's why there's yeah. that's why there's a market, right? Some of us have a more bullish thesis and the shorts have a more bearish thesis. Only time will tell which one will be correct. It's speculative because we don't know. And I consider it a recovery play, you know, for myself. Um, and I constantly check the market cap because if you look uh, ever since um, conversion reverse split, it's traded basically at a roughly a billion market cap. And guess where we are today? Roughly at a billion market cap. If you add in the dilution, if you add in all the shares, you know, the 80 million, 83 million shares or whatever that are dilution. I add that into the what we already have for a float and then do my calculation. It's roughly a billion dollars, you know. Wired Ape says uh, he didn't need people to hold the stock. He need, needed people to go see movies. I, I'm glad you said that, Wired Ape, because I've said this many, many times to you guys. The number one thing you can do, because I'm pretty sure most of you have a lot of shares if you're still in this chat while we've been talking about AMC for a while. The number one thing you can do to positively affect this company is not buy more stock, although they could use it. They could use it right now while they're trying to raise money. They could use you supporting uh, buying the stock. And I have been. I have been. I bought some yesterday. But the number popcorn. one thing they need is for you to go see a fucking movie and buy some popcorn. Because revenue is what saves AMC. That's it. That is but, it. But I will add, uh, Wired Ape, that we don't have the amount of movies that we need to have to have the box office we need to have for profitability. That's part of our problem too. Yes, we should all be going to the movies. That is true. But on top of that, we need the box office to come back. I'm I'm going to see movies that I wouldn't even normally go see. And I'm buying a meal. Like I won't eat. I won't eat breakfast. I won't eat lunch. And then I'll go to a three o'clock movie and I'll get a hamburger and a bacon loaded tots and a, a beer and I'll spend 40 bucks. <clears throat> why, why don't I eat? Because that's a fuck ton of calories and I'm, I feel sick <laughs> after I'm done. I can't be eating 4,000 calories a day, but, uh, I, I do my best to support this company by watching movies and, uh, spending money at concessions. That, that is an important contribution and, uh, none of you should be neglecting that piece of it if there is a theater near you. For me, it's almost more important than buying shares, honestly. And I do go, but it takes me a drive. I have to plan it out. It's not something I could just jump in a car and 10 minutes away, I'm at the theater. I don't, I don't have that luxury. Well, I'll forgive you. I mean, if there's not an AMC within an hour drive, you you have my forgiveness mediocre for not going to see three movies a week <clears throat> matt says do you think it's true that trey is a bus boy at a restaurant now i i don't know i saw the video where that was alleged from uh, plain bagel in fact i think didn't trey say he said in a message to plain bagel that he was working at a restaurant. I don't, I don't know. Honestly, don't know. I don't talk to Trey. Yeah, I have no idea. Last time I talked to him, I, uh, when he quit YouTube, I sent him a message and said, I understand what you're going through. And, uh, I wish you all the best. He was, he was under a lot of pressure. And I think he, I think he, if I recall, that was been some time ago. I think he just responded something simple like, thank you.
I mean, we all made mistakes. I just let it go now. It's not worth it uh, to hash all that stuff out. I just, I don't care. I'm here to make money and help as many people as I can, and that's why I'm on live. Other than that, I could care less. John says, would you rather have 25 million people see four movies or buy 100 of AMC? I would, I would rather the first, John. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Revenue right now is what matters to us as shareholders. Revenue Cash and profits. Baby. This price is not going to go up. Uh, let me let me rephrase it. Why do I say that I'd rather people go see movies? If there's no revenue, if there's no profits, John, the shorts are going to be emboldened to keep pushing the price down. Doesn't matter if you buy 100 shares. Doesn't matter if 25 million people buy 100 shares. They have way more money than we do. And we're just, we're just fucking buying and holding. They're fucking thrashing, turning over the stock, pushing the price down. They are not going to fucking leave until this company is profitable. Right. And AMC gets zero money from you buying 100 shares unless they dilute. Unless, right, right. Actively, right now, they're diluting. They could use your money to buy the stock. That in this moment... This is a good time to support the company by buying stock. Not financial advice, but <clears throat> after the dilution's done, you're better off going to a movie. That's the only exactly. way you're going to get you rid want, of the shorts. Want... <coughs> yeah. If you want to get money into the balance sheet with AMC, that's, that's how you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to go to the movies and, and support the theater. If you don't, I'm not telling people today you have to do that, but that would help them. Buying the stock doesn't help them. You're only help, helping, uh, well, you're helping yourself if the stock goes up or you're helping whoever pushing the stock down. Wired Ape says, I appreciate your movie updates. Maybe you can give after movie reactions and YouTube shorts. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking you've been pushing me, Wired Ape, to, to do more movie reviews, and I have been trying to do that. And uh, I'll tell you, I've been looking at like to get to become an official movie reviewer, like on Rotten Tomatoes, you have to have a, a two year history of publishing movie reviews. So I'm still about eight months away from from doing that. So maybe if I can get approved to be an official movie reviewer then uh, maybe I'll start doing based on the reviews that I've published. Maybe I'll start doing more content. I'll, uh, what's his name? The, the guy who has the movie channel, the one that's out at CinemaCon right now. Can't remember his name off the top of my head. Anyways, I, I was talking to my wife the other day. I was like, wouldn't that be fucking cool if, if we could get paid to do what we love to like go watch a fucking movie. Tony, why pa don't you paid with paid by paid? I mean, with a movie review channel or a website, because I love movies. I do. I'd love, and I love going to see them as soon as they come out and sharing thoughts with you guys. It'd be nice to be monetized for doing something that you love. Tony, tell uh, the viewers how you got the uh, invite to comic con or, uh, <laughs> CinemaCon next year. I have not gotten an Im invite to CinemaCon. <laughs> but I, I did reach out to them. I Just already with yes, it, Tony. <laughs> I, I, I reached out to them about uh getting press credentials for next year. So if depending on what they tell me, I I would love to go out there next year. Wired Ape says, is Discord free to members or subs? Um, <clears throat> the Discord is free to members of the channel, Wired Ape. Not to, not to subscribers, because I, got, I have a lot of subscribers and a lot of them hate me. <laughs> but uh, 
the members of the channel, the ones that are actively wanting fact-based DD, and they're willing to pay 16 cents a day for to help offset the cost of all the tools that I utilize to provide you guys info, uh, the Discord is free for that. So it's, it's $5 a month to be a, a member of the channel with Discord access. I have a lot of people that are members of the channel supporting the channel that don't even join the Discord, even though it's free to them. And I, I always say to you guys, if you got a badge next to your name in the chat there and you're not in Discord, why not? It's free. That's and where a lot of stuff happens. You I, I am literally in there from 6 or 7 in the morning till 7 o'clock at night, sometimes till midnight. Uh, you're you're getting a lot of value for your 16 cents a day. You know, but, voice uh, chats are a lot easier, like, you know, uh, to communicate. I prefer, I prefer voice chats. I'm in voice chat uh, a lot. <laughs> <clears throat> John Campea. Yeah, Wired Ape. That's the dude's name. I've been watching his updates from CinemaCon. I'm going to reach out to him and uh, see if we can do a live stream or something together at some point. Uh, I think he's uh, he seems like a very reasonable dude, and he's he's living the dream job, right? Just reviewing movies and enjoying life. His knowledge is encyclopedia levels higher than mine. And I, I, I've told Wired Ape this before. Like, I'd be a horrible movie reviewer because I'm just not trained in the art. But I could, I could get there if, like, I if I apply myself, I could get there. You go work for Rotten Tomatoes. Is that, huh? the name of, is that the name of the movie reviewers? Rotten Tomatoes? Uh, Rotten Tomatoes is like the big website. And I think if you're if you're approved by them as an official reviewer, you know, that adds a little bit of credibility. So we'll see. I'll let y'all know later this year what they say. I, I give it about a 20% probability because I, I don't have a like a dedicated movie review channel, but I do I'm doing the best I can to put out reviews on I tell you, every time I go to a movie, and I go to a lot, I publish them on Twitter, YouTube, community page, Discord. Uh, maybe I should just be making a a five-minute review every time I go see a movie and publish it on YouTube. Maybe I should do that. We'll see. I guess we'll see. What I'm trying to do the minimum effort to get in. <laughs> If they require more effort, I will gladly do it because I'm not going to stop seeing movies. Even, even at some point, if the AMC play is over, I'm not ever going to stop going to see movies. Doug says you guys should start one together, me and John. Yeah, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a peon in his world, Doug. But maybe, I mean... I'd, I'd be honored at some point if he'd just come on and uh, we could talk movies for one day. And I, I won't drink and I won't curse. <laughs> and I won't smoke a pipe. <laughs> oh, God. That's funny. Were you drinking whiskey, Tony? Yep. I'm drinking. The, this is the leftover bottle of my birthday bottle. The uh, Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, finished in a second oak barrel. It is very, very rich, very good. Stephen says, looks like CinemaCon is very expensive to attend. Yes, Stephen. <laughs> is it? <laughs> it's like, I think it starts around 600 bucks. Wow. <clears throat> And uh, I don't know, I don't know if the press gets a reduced rate or a comp ticket. What I do know, Stephen, is that the uh, the attendees, if you have a booth, they get guest passes. So if I don't get press credentials, maybe my my 
second strategy would be cozy up with somebody in the industry that has a booth on the showroom floor and uh, see if they'll throw me some guest passes. I'm surprised that Aaron hasn't uh, sent you there for the past four years. <laughs> Why? Because because he talks to me every day. I thought he was in your ear, dude. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. 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 Wired Ape says uh, John Campea is a formal professional lawyer. I don't know much about his uh, background, Wired, but uh, I also saw someone, and I don't know if it was you. Uh, a few weeks or months ago said that he used to work for AMC. D does anyone know if that is correct? I have no idea. I don't know anything about his history. What I like about John is uh, I think that he's very honest in his reviews. Like he wants movies to succeed. <clears throat> if it's a great movie, he's going to tell you it's a great movie. If it was just a good movie, but he enjoyed it, he'll be honest with you on that. And if it was bad, he'll, he'll tell you it's bad. In fact, I heard him talking about Megalopolis today. And uh, he said, I, you know, I haven't seen any previews of Megalopolis, but the things I'm hearing are not that great. Like it's going to be tough for Megalopolis to get a distributor. And I was like, oh shit. I hate to hear that because I I had a secret hope that Megalopolis was going to be, this is the Francis Ford Coppola movie that he funded himself. I had uh, a secret hope that it was going to be a fantastic blockbuster and that people were going to be fighting to get it in the theater. And that's not what I'm hearing. And that is, uh, uh, on a personal level, that's disappointing. Because Lord knows we could use a, a hidden blockbuster to drop in the 2024 slate. I'd like that. That would make me happy. We could use a concert deal, Adam, also. Yes, please. And uh, by the way, guys, I saw there's a UFC fight being shown at AMC on the 13th. I need to see if I can fit that in. Because I, I like watching UFC fights. I don't like paying for the pay-per-view. Pay and uh, I've, I've never tried one at AMC, so that might be fun. And going to a freaking bar is a pain in the ass around here. They charge an arm and a leg if you want a chair to sit in. Yeah, a lot of places are like that. And uh, sometimes I have friends you know, that are hosting parties for UFC fights. And so that's typically where I watch them. Sometimes I have friends wink, wink, nudge, nudge that are uh, bootstrapping the stream and posting it in discord. I don't know if that's going to happen this time or not. I won't, I won't name any names, but you know who you are. Let us know in a private message. If not, Would if not, I'll consider watching it at AMC. I need a I need a decision in the next twenty four hours. What do you think about uh, the Olympics coming to uh, the cinema? Uh, I, I, know, I kind of feel I kind of feel the same way, but I will say this though: if they have Soccer, we call soccer in America. Uh, it might help overseas because they're uh, big in the old football. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, I, I'm kind of non-committal about it, but I will say that if there is any incremental revenue, that is good. It's better than doing nothing. But me personally, am I going to go watch the Olympics at a theater? Probably not. I'm, with you. So I'm giving working. you... What am I going to do? Am I going to watch the Olympics at a theater? No. Am I going to watch them on TV? Probably fucking no too. Cause I just don't care. <laughs> that's just, that's not me shitting on AMC. I just don't really care about the Olympics. But if you do like the Olympics and you want to watch it on the big screen, 
AMC is your place. For people that love the Olympics, it's a great opportunity. And for AMC, it's a great incremental revenue source that was not there last year. So my first response to you, Mediocre, is my personal response. I just don't care about the Olympics. But for AMC, if they put two butts in a seat that buy popcorn in a in an auditorium that was going to be unused, that's better than nothing. You heard Adam Aaron say that they're only selling like 20 to 30% of their seats. Right? Yeah. So anything they can do, keep on doing it. Keep on trying shit. See what works. Maybe they'll surprise me. I'm interested to see the numbers when it's all said and done, though, just because uh, I think the overseas numbers will be bigger than than here because of that, you know. But I, I those numbers I do want to see, just because I think it's odd that that happened, you know. Hey, mediocre. Speaking of numbers that you want to see, how come we're not seeing any popcorn numbers? The the flat earthers want to know. If popcorn is being hidden in a secret business on books that aren't being reported. Where's the popcorn numbers, mediocre? It's in the beverage and food. Wait. You mean it's already in the numbers? Yeah. It, it's not a secret hidden company that they're hiding from us? No. You mean there's not embezzlement and it's fraud it, going on? It's illegal to do that. Thanks for putting me on the spot, though. Appreciate yeah, it. I, I just wanted—I <laughs> just wanted to address that because we got a bunch of dipshits wondering where the numbers at, guys. The numbers are in the fucking ten Qs. It's if really they weren't simple. in there, if they weren't in there, I'll tell you this: the SEC would be all over them. Yeah, and so would the IRS. So would the auditors. Right. AMC's not stupid, guys. You got to get out of this fucking conspiracy mindset. Jesus Christ. What is and wrong with you people? It's a protection racket. I get it. Now, if, if you want to talk to me about corruption, do I think the market's corrupt? I do think there's corruption going on in the market. I agree with you there, but not everything is corruption. The numbers That's are not being reported out separately, quite honestly, because they're not big enough to brag about. It's really that simple. This is a right. startup. It's a startup product line. There's probably cost associated with starting it up. You're going to have to wait a while to get breakout numbers on. Uh, we just found out in the last week what the profits are on merch. I uh, The first time I've ever heard a number was in the last five days on merchandise. So you might have to wait four years to hear an, a popcorn number. I'm sorry. But if you think that they're not in there, why are you even investing? If you think everything is that conspiratorial, if you don't understand how accounting and auditing works, you don't need to be buying stocks. And you certainly don't need to be commenting on them on YouTube. I'm sorry. I know that's harsh, mediocre. Probably hurt somebody's feelings. What about what about the cocoa prices? <laughs> <laughs> Too soon, uh, Tony. <laughs> best best joke of the day. I mean, I was I was randomly listening into a space call today, and I guys, I I kid you not. They were talking about the rising cocoa prices, which they are. They're going through the roof. <clears throat> How can I say this delicately without offending my fellow? AMC investors. Guys, I want you to be bullish on AMC. I, I love that you support the company. I bought shares yesterday. I will be buying more shares tomorrow. 100% guaranteed. A lot. Because <laughs> I, I have options that are about to, to be exercised. But what they said on this space call today, I was just like, what the hell are these people talking about? They said, here's what they said. <laughs> I'm sorry. Cocoa prices are going through the roof. Nestle and Hershey are about to go bankrupt, and AMC candy business will be the last man standing 
in the chocolate business? Now, I, I, <laughs> I love the bullish thesis there, but I don't know. I mean, that's like, it's like trying to push a rope there. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> he said push a fuck. <laughs> I'm fucking dead, Tony. <laughs> oh, man. How do, I just, Tony, can you just answer me one question? Sure. It's about, it's about the, the, the candy side that we're into now. Like, where did AMC get the money to buy this magnificent candy factory, this chocolate factory? The Wonka factory, the, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. I gotta go. <laughs> AMC is not buying a vineyard. AMC is not buying a distillery, and AMC does not own a candy factory. We don't have a fucking candy business. Stop saying this shit. They're outsourcing it. They're outsourcing it to a factory that's a white label. Yeah, they're company, just labeling candy putting products. AMC's label on the fucking product. Yes, they have some, they have some discretion to uh, specify the ingredients, the thickness of the chocolate over the almonds, all that shit. But we don't own a fucking candy candy factory. Did you see the disclosure of the purchase of a candy factory in the ten Qs? I didn't. Neither did I. There's no Come on, guys. Wake, wake the fuck the up. I mean, I love the bullishness, but read the fucking filings. Come on. Look, I didn't want to trash people. I'm, I apologize. We're not trashing me. people. We're just being factual. They're the ones not being factual on that. We're just going to keep it 100 here with you. We could fucking barely afford to keep the fucking lights on for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me. I'm sorry. I mean, I was in the manufacturing business for 15 years on my corporate job. I was in factories, not chocolate factories, not Mullen car factories, not Lucid car. <laughs> I was in high-tech manufacturing. And in the same fucking building, they were building products for five different companies. It's just a factory, guys. They have lines. They have people. They contract out to major corporations Hello, and they, Manuel. Sl they slap the label of the company on the product that's what they're doing with the chocolate it's that simple and the popcorn the, we don't own a popcorn factory sorry to tell you i mean does anybody does anybody think that we own a uh, a chocolate factory like seriously it, it would be dumb it would be dumb to buy a popcorn factory it would be stupid to buy a chocolate factory do you know how much that uh, shit costs? It's way much smarter. Is that proper English? It's way smarter just to subcontract it out. Uh, they take a cut. You get to keep your profit percentage, and that's it. It's simple. It's clean. It's very low risk for the company. Exactly. And uh, I 100% approve of what they're doing. I subcontract do the work. We're not we're not in the candy business. We're in the movie business, right? Adam Marin doesn't even want to talk about some of these concert movies. Well, Why? we're we're in the concessions business, mediocre. Like the bulk of their money is made from selling popcorn well, and candy, but we're not in the manufacturing of candy business. Agreed. I agree with you there. What I'm trying to say though is they need movies to bring people in so they they can sell their concessions. That that's really what you want to say. That's ultimately what's going on. I know. I mean, this is going to blow a lot of people out of the water to find out that AMC is not a candy company. But uh, do the real DD, like read a 10Q and show me where we bought a candy factory. It would be disclosed. You know that, right? But, Sufi, but is Sufian listening in? I don't know if he is. But here's the thing, guys. Seriously, and this is no bullshit, right? What AMC has the ability to do with their candy that they they're purchased, they have a deal with uh, 
a manufacturing company that manufactures it for them, they have the ability to choose not to use Hershey's chocolate or any of these other chocolates. They could display their candy as front, you know, <laughs> so people purchase their stuff more. They have the ability to do that, which helps them in and revenue. They get it for a fraction of the cost of buying the the name brand products that are in the display aisle and the candy aisle. Like the AMC is getting a much higher markup when you're buying cinema sweets. I, I probably will never buy anything other than the cinema sweets if we're buying candy because I know that helps the company out more. Do I buy them every time I'm there? No, I don't buy them every time. But uh, I do buy them from time to time. And uh, like last time uh, when I went to see Civil War, I got the number one combo, which guys, they very intelligently upgraded the number one combo. It used to be a large popcorn and a large Coke at about 18 bucks. Now it's a large popcorn, large Coke, and a cinema sweets. And the price is now like $23.99. So I love that they slid in some incremental revenue opportunities and pushing the cinema suites. I love that. But when I went to go see civil war on Monday to my dismay, there was no uh, cinema suites pretzels available. So I opted for the, uh, the almonds, which is my second favorite choice. So, so Tony, the other thing I'd like to say is like, you know, um, there's a lot of like uh, influencers, not necessarily AMC influencers, but like there's a lot of influencers who sell T-shirts and hats and all kinds of stuff. They sell uh, coffee mugs, right? We got some AMC YouTubers that sell coffee mugs, right? For example, okay, those those coffee mugs are not manufactured by the fucking YouTuber. Are you sure? I'm fucking positive, Tony. Are you sure he's not like hand stamping the logo and the <laughs> the phrase on there? I'm positive. You mean it's like manufactured and drop shipped? Yes, exactly. I don't know about that mediocre. I just, you know, maybe I just made it up, Tony. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> You are 100% correct, my friend. I know that. I'm just Except for the ape father. Oh. He bought like 300 t-shirts and had all those boxes in his living room, remember? Yeah. And I, I wanted I, I wanted to tell no. him, like, Richie, you know you can drop shit that stuff, drop ship that stuff, and not have to lay out all the cash for the inventory. You know that, right? But apparently he didn't. So I, I hope he sold through all that inventory. I don't know. I don't do nothing like that. I got other other uh, business ventures, Tony, you know. I I have one or two myself, mediocre. None of them. But, but Tony, don't you make all your money from YouTube? <laughs> Social Blade, right? Yeah. <laughs> No, I do not make all my, I, I barely make any money from YouTube. I have the luxury of being here every day because of the other businesses that I operate. It, it cracks me up mediocre when I see people trashing my other businesses on YouTube comments or, or live streams. Meanwhile, they're going to their job mopping floors at midnight. <laughs> I know what you mean. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I, to I totally do because somebody told me I don't know shit about business, Tony. They said that <laughs> in their live stream one time. Uh, and no offense to anybody thought... going to no offense to anybody going to a real job mopping floors, but when you're going to make fun of an entrepreneur who has several e commerce businesses while you're going to work and I'm sitting at home all day hanging out with my buddies, hanging out with my wife, trading, then I know you're a straight up idiot. Like make fun of it all you want while I sit here in the comfort of my 
chair or my stand-up desk and uh, get to enjoy my life, my time, gardening, the pets, my wife, trading. Make fun of it all you want. It's hilarious to me. I'm just glad I don't know nothing about business, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> what is your business again? Are you like selling crack to pregnant ladies or something? No. Uh, I'm just teasing. Don't, 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 was, don't give them, don't give them. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> it was not important to me. <laughs> I'm not sure. It was an interesting conversation. I'll say that. Doug wants to know how's the guitar going, Tony? It's going pretty slow, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I had my, my son was over here uh, a couple for my birthday weekend a couple weeks ago. We did a barbecue, had some drinks. We talked about some stocks. I, I have a funny story about that, but uh, I, he was trying to learn the guitar also. And he's, he's a trained musician. He took music classes in high school. Um. And I, I was telling him about, you know, my problem with the guitar is my fucking fat fingers. I can't get the damn angle right up on the neck of the guitar. And I keep on pushing multiple strings. And I, I said, I'm sure if I paid for a tutor, they could straighten me out in, in a day or two. But I'm being very stubborn trying to teach myself. And I also am still having just the, the muscle memory, not the muscle memory, but the muscle strain of like, not my fingers and my hand not being used to doing that. So I'm still working on the very basics. That's, that's what I'll say. Don't expect any concerts on live streams anytime soon. And I said, I said, I'm going to be very patient. I'm very patient with it. I'm not planning on dying anytime soon. And, uh, I, I do it when I have free time. And I, I will continue working on it. And when I'm ready to debut being a, a failed rock star, in addition to a failed actor, <laughs> then uh, I will let you know. But Tony, are you going to uh, create a, a song for the AMC community? <laughs> <laughs> All we do is buy the lows and sell oh. the rips. I'm going to add an extra verse to that song. I like it. I like it. Yes, I will. I will mediocre. That'll, that's on my list. I will, so create Steve, a, I will create a song for traders, not for AMC. I will create a song for people that want to make money. How about that? Steven, I see your comment. Uh, it is true. We argue over, uh, small amounts of uh, price in the stock while others do not. I'll say that. What did he say? <laughs> he said, most of these apes. Oh, uh, here it is. <laughs> most of these apes talking about $300 per share while mediocre and I argue over $3 calls. <clears throat> yeah, I don't even want to talk to you guys about my price target because we're, uh, we're way... We're trying to get our cost basis under three bucks, and we're going to be selling on on any run up here if if one happens. So, uh, long term, are we bullish? Yes, we're forecasting our price targets already for 2025 and 2026. Make no mistake about it. We think that the price has a you know if the company doesn't go bankrupt, which I don't think it is based on current information, think that the price could be much higher. Than where it's at right now and in, in 2025 or 2026 but in the short term we're not thinking about 300 dollars price targets we're thinking about if we could buy at 250 and sell at five we just doubled our money tony got a question for you yes sir if the um hobo down the street today bought 300 shares of stock do you think he's going to hold to 300 dollars? absolutely not do you think he's going to hold at $12? Maybe. I mean, is is he an ape? 
No, he's some hobo random guy. No, he he is. needs to fucking get a house and some new clothes and some food in his belly. <laughs> I'm not picking on hobos. The, the point I'm trying to make here is any new investor that comes into AMC right now is cutting the legs out from under any of the apes that are holding the stock now. And I'm, I'm kind of thinking this. like if you're holding a really high cost average, you know, go ahead and hold on to those shares for the just in case shit. But I, I think that like I'm looking at this price right now, like a pretty good risk to reward ratio. And so I'm loading up. I say loading up, but that's not true. I bought, I bought a few shares. I buy them in lots of a hundred. There's just to be, we, I'm not buying one a day. I'm not buying one a day and posting it in my discord. Like some other YouTubers. When I buy, it's at least 100 shares. And some of our people are, are buying 500 or 1,000 at a time. So when we're talking about buying, we're not buying and posting one share a day in the Discord. That might be impressive on other YouTube channels. That's not how we do it over here. But uh, at any rate, we're trying to find a low right now, understand the risk so that we don't get wrecked, get in on what we think the low is and then get out on some run up rinse and repeat until the point that the company has much less risk, much less speculation. And then we want to write it up to those 2025, 2026 highs. That's how we're playing early 2024 in case there's any misunderstanding of who you're talking to. Yeah. For all the haters, this is what I'm going to tell you. I'm, I'm just letting people know that there are going to be new people entering this play at this at this price, and they will sell before people have the opportunity who are holding from 2021. I'll just I'm, I'm, where I was going with that story, Mediocre, is like if you have shares that are way up here and you look those and you want to hold out, you, you, you don't have much choice, right? You can You can hope that it goes way back up there at some point, but I think it would be smart to, if you want to invest in AMC, if you think that it's not going bankrupt, if you think that the industry is going to get better, and if you think you're not going to be diluted to hell, to buy here at $250, $280, and if it runs up to 4 or $5, sell it. Take your profits. And then just, yes. rinse, and, just rinse and repeat. That's not advice to anyone. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm trading it because why? Yeah, why wouldn't you? Why? I'll always hold some for the what if you know magic run up, but I'm more interested in, in paying for that next vacation, mediocre paying for the ranch house. <laughs> I like it. I'm not interested in holding something to zero. Yeah, me either. So. That will never happen with me. I got, uh, you know, I got my own problems that I need to deal with. Uh, can you uh, can you remind me what are your five whys? Uh, yeah, it's my wife and my four children. That's right. You know. But I'm what about me, me, Rolf, Grandpa, Gus, and Stephen? Aren't you no, holding for us? No. Why? Why would you I fucking, fucking, you fucking you? chill? <laughs> Listen, do I, do I, uh, you know, share my knowledge to make sure that nobody, you know, like you share your knowledge with me? I mean, the street's two ways. I like that. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm very upfront with what I'm doing now. <laughs> By the way, Steven says uh, one, one hobo ape is undefeated. <laughs> that's messed up, Steven. That's that's messed up. Northwest I Sasquatch says he's buying a thousand in the morning. I'm going to share my uh, my uh, spreadsheet with excuse me with you guys one more time for those that weren't here in the beginning. And again, this is just theoretical. This is our attempt to model what is happening. We have no idea if this is correct or not. 
we're using logic, we're using math, we're using previous dilution. And uh, this is how I am basing my current trading strategy. We're focusing on scenario two being the likely scenario that they sold a lot of volume at a higher price, 328 and 41, and that they're currently trying to sell about 10% of the daily volume above the VWAP. That's where I get these average prices about the VWAP of the day. Currently, they, my estimate is they've sold 193 million. There's 56 million to go. The average price they've sold at up to this point is $3.38. They're 77% done. And if the volume remains at 14 to 16 million for the next 10 or so trading days, they will complete the, uh, the equity raise at uh, on 5.1. Now, why do I have the price declining every day? This is, this is just a guess. This is my worst case scenario. It could be worse than even my worst case scenario. But I'm, I would like to see, forget about the screen for a second. I would like to see people support the price where it's at, 280. We'll be done long before May 1st if people are buying at 280. If the market is positive, overall market is positive, we'll be done long before May 1st. But if people are not buying, if you have more low volume days, like these two 9 million days, AMC is going to drop where they are willing to sell shares. They're going to drop the price to spur volume. So I just have factored in a 2% price decline every day. I hope that's not correct. But in my worst case scenario for me, I think we could see 250, 251 by May 1st. Uh, I would hope this is not true. I'm just going to be blunt with you. I hope this is not true. But I'm, I'm keeping some cash aside in case I see the price going down. And I'm only looking at the volume every day right now for the next two weeks. If you see a low volume day, you can expect the next day the price to be lower. That would be my guess. Is that a fair guess, Mediocre? I would have to agree with you. The volume is key because if without volume, volume is shares traded. That's that's what it is. So if we're not trading shares, right, you got to move the price to where <laughs> you can trade, right? They need to sell the shares. People need to buy them. And the only way they can get people to buy them is to lower the price they're willing to sell at. Right. No, I don't I want, want them to sell them that. Like that. Yeah, I I, 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 none of us want to see the price go down. We're just telling you our math, and the, and the only thing we're looking at is daily volume. If we see a low volume day, we expect the next day the price to be to trade lower. Yeah, and we're we're assuming that he's going to be completed before earn, earnings. That's where we get our metrics from, right? Yeah, we so, are making an assumption he wants this to be done before the earnings call. If our assumption is incorrect, you can fucking forget about that spreadsheet. Exactly. Right? But that's just, you know, it's an educated guess. We don't know that that's going to be turn out factual or not. We just, we're assuming. But Mohammed, I've seen your question. Mohammed asked, uh, AMC is going to reverse split with a question mark. Uh, is is his comment? Uh, I'm going to say, I do not believe so. Even the most bearish, rational people I've talked to say that is not going to happen. Now, there's a lot of flat earth conspiracy theorists, Adam Aaron hating AMC Aaron, AMC hating people that think it's going to $1.50 or that there'll be a reverse split. I just don't see it. I could be wrong, but uh, the reason they did the last reverse split was to free up shares to sell and to increase the price. They still, even when, when this dilution is done, they still have over 220 million shares to sell should they need it. And I don't think they will need it. So I don't see, I'll just say this. The way I like to say it is I assign a very low probability to another reverse split. 
they're not in trouble with NASDAQ. Uh, they're not in trouble with NYSE till below a buck. We're a long way away from a dollar. The last reverse split was only to free up shares and increase the price so they could raise cash. Pop Doug's uh, message up on this on the thing for everybody because Doug is correct. <laughs> because that also works for a uh, reverse split, right? I'm, I'm looking for it. The, the wife is home. I did not get your text. I have my okay, phone on. So. Minutes, I'll be home. Can you try to wrap up your stuff? All right. We're, we're getting the first warning to please wrap up. That means we have one hour to go. I'm looking for your message, Doug. In is it the inconceivable? Yeah, inconceivable. The reason I say that is because we we already basically that to me that reads bankruptcies off the table. That's what I see when when he said that was quoted as saying that. That's what I see, right? So bankruptcies off the table. We still got 200 million shares. Bella. After this dilution is done and over with, so. You got the box office coming back. Um, I just, I, I don't see how people think that. I, I don't see that. Because mediocre, they're not using math. They're not looking at financial statements. They're not thinking like management. And they're very negative on the play. And, you know. I don't see the emotions. That's number one. So I'll just say I, that. I talk about psychology, understanding the psychology of the market. When I see people like this super, super negative and super emotional, then I usually want to bet against them. Just like when I see people super, super bullish and overly bullish, I, I want to bet against them. That's a fair thing to say to me. <laughs> well, I'm talking like the finger run up right now. FNGR running up because they announced a warrant with a $7 exercise price. And they're pushing the price up because of that. I'm like, this is the dumbest run up ever. And uh, I'll, I'll buy puts on that. I'll buy puts on a, a 30 day downtrend on the price. <clears throat> but by the same token, when I see people being overly negative, then uh, that's my time. That's my signal that it might be time to buy in. And I, I think there are a high segment of people being overly negative on AMC right now. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm too optimistic, but I spend a lot of time looking at the math and my math gets better every month that goes by. Our, our accuracy level in predicting what's next gets better every month that goes by. Have we made some mistakes? Sure, we've made some mistakes. Sufi but we, we learn from those mistakes. Unlike other people, we don't just throw our toys in the sandbox and walk away. We fucking learn, pivot, fall back, create a new strategy and move forward. Yeah, that's the thing. You know how many times we change strategies because the market's ever changing. You you get curveballs all the time. You got to stick and move, right? If you're just going to hold the stock, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying, but if you're going to hold the stock, you're going to take the brunt of all that stuff. So, did you see Sufjan in the chat? Uh, I don't listen to Mr. Tux, but uh, so I don't know. We're not proving good due diligence. I don't even know what that means. I mean, he's led his people. His, his, what does he call them? What does he say? Something about uh, he calls them millionaires. Meanwhile, they're down like 80%, Sufyan. So I'm not, he called for 60 cents. Was, wasn't he calling for like, what the fuck? He, he, let's just say he widely missed the most recent earnings. He doesn't know what goodwill is. He's been calling that wrong on AMC for two years. So I wouldn't take due diligence advice from that gentleman. We're sitting, we're sitting in our AMC trade uh, with a cost basis under three bucks. And we're, we're painfully going through the, the financials and being very blunt about it. Uh, I'm not sure what his complaint is. 
He also said I'm pumping Highcroft and Bed Bath and Beyond, but he doesn't watch my videos. So I, I I just don't I don't give any credence to somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about on multiple fronts, doesn't know what they're talking about. He's gonna keep buying GameStop all the way down to six bucks. And I say good luck to you, sir. I hope they come up with a plan. I hope they come up with a plan before that. I'm not sure what Mr. Mr. Tux's problem is with me, to be honest. I just, you know what I mean? He wore a tuxedo and I laughed. That's all. I thought it was funny. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Have a good day. I just keep making my little pennies. <laughs> Walt, with a good question here, Walt says, uh, is pattern day trading rule changing after May 21st with new T plus one? Uh, I don't know. I haven't even looked into that. I've seen that comment now. I, I, it makes me want to really, really look into it. Yeah, um, that's. I, I have contacts at FINRA. Uh, I can email them and ask them, but that is a great question. I don't know. I will look into that. That's a. I mean, well, my accounts are over, and I'm already flagged to a pattern day trader, so it doesn't really affect me. Um, but that's a I'll, good thing. I love when you guys come with questions like that, Walt. Like that is the power of a community like this. You guys get us thinking about stuff that we're so focused on other things. And uh, you guys ask ex excellent questions that we aren't even thinking about. And I, I will try and get an answer to that. That affects uh, people with smaller accounts. So um, it's a good idea to look into it. I should know that information, so. All right, mediocre. We're gonna wrap it up in three minutes so that uh, Scarlett doesn't get too mad at me. Yeah, we don't want to make her upset. Hey, babe. Do you work tomorrow? Yeah. What time? Two forty. All right. So she's not gonna be going to sleep early. I can tell you that. <laughs> she. Okay. The clinic that she works at, I think, is open till like 11 p.m. So it's, it's going to be a long day for her, but not. she's not going to have to wake up at the butt crack of dawn. That's not a nice, nice thing to say. What? Walt, the, the man, his comment here. It's a poor man's question about uh, pattern day trading. No, I mean, look, everybody has different account sizes. You got to start somewhere, and there's no problem with that. I didn't always have what I have in my account. There's uh, no shame in having an account under twenty five thousand. the 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 thing is, like, being smart with your trading so that you grow it above twenty five thousand. The thing is, is even if you, this is what people don't realize, right? Just because you can trade, um, you know, over 25 and the PDQ rule doesn't affect you. Well, it still does because your account gets flagged. So if you ever go under, you only get one shot. You can get it taken off one time and that's it. And then you, it's also, it's uh, correct me if I'm wrong, mediocre, but if you have a cash account, you're not you're not constrained by the pattern day trading rule. You're correct. It's only for margin accounts. I, I need to do a fucking video on this because I've yeah. watched so many YouTubers blow up their accounts getting uh, flagged with pattern day trading because they had a margin account when they didn't have twenty five thousand dollars. Guys, look, if you have under a twenty five thousand dollar account, make sure your broker has it set as a cash account. That would just be my general recommendation. Then you don't have to worry about pattern day trading. It's it, and it's I've even I've even, I, ha I have multiple accounts and multiple brokers. I don't have twenty five thousand in every account, <clears throat> but they always want to open up your account as a margin account so that they can lend out your shares. Call them up, tell them that you want to switch it to a cash account if you have 25,000. Why would you want to do that? I'm just going to give you some things to think about. 
you can't day trade anyways with under 25,000. So why wouldn't you have a cash account? If you're in a cash account, you're not constrained by pattern day trading rules. You're only constrained by cash settlement, by trade settlement. You, you only have to worry about good faith violation. If that doesn't make sense, give me a thumbs up and I will make a video explaining it. I'll, I'll, let me add to that, Tony. So let me let me tell you guys how it actually works too, right? So let's say you, you're trading XYZ, right? You catch a run up on XYZ. You buy a low, you sell the high, right? Let's say a stock pulls back and it's starting to run up again. And you buy the low and sell the high. Well, the first shares you sold didn't clear. So the second time you bought that stock, you're trading on margin. You're trading on their money because those shares haven't cleared. That's what people don't realize. Um, so with the cash account, that doesn't happen because they, you don't have access to that money. If you do it, if you, if you, if you do have access and you end up trading it anyways, you end up with a good faith violation. So, you know, there's a lot involved in it, but it's to me, it's not really worth it. Candace says you can only day trade in with less than 25,000 in options. That is an incorrect statement. And I've even corrected brokers on the phone where I, I asked them point blank. I said, I want to switch this this particular account because I have less than twenty five thousand. I want to switch it to a cash account. And can you confirm that I won't be constrained by the pattern day trading rules? He's like, no, you still be constrained by. It. I was like, can you check the rule book? He's like, oh, you're actually correct. Guys, go read the definition of pattern day trading. It only applies to margin accounts. That's right. You could buy an option. You can buy an option every day right but you, can't but you can buy you can buy a stock and trade it four times in a day if you have a cash account as long as you're trading with settled cash it's the same thing with options that's exactly it. you need to settle cash there's there's no uh in other words let me break this down if you have a thousand dollars in your your account and you buy a thousand dollars of stock and sell it in the same day you cannot trade again until that trade settles, T plus two. But if you buy $100, you could do it nine times, 10 times in a day because you have settled cash. So with a cash account and you're trading options, it makes it good because you could buy an option one day and sell it that same day and your cash will clear the next day. You don't have to wait T plus two. That's why I, I trade a lot of options. But the other thing is if you're going to do spreads and not all brokers are the same, Depends on a broker. But if you're going to do spread positions, option spreads. Candace, let me ask you, uh, who is your, uh, what broker are you trading with? <laughs> Northwest says, Tony, if Hollywood is to make a sequel to City Slickers, would you consider the role of Curly? I'd take any role that pays money, Northwest Sasquatch. All the movies exactly. that I, all the movies I did were uh, unpaid, and most of them didn't even give me a fucking clip that I could use in my reel. So they were mostly failed projects. But if I ever had a, a chance to do a movie where uh, I got paid and I got my SAG after card, absolutely, Curly. Whoever, I'd be anybody. I'd be the old man that runs the fucking inn or the tavern. I don't care. Candace, I knew that's where you were going. That's why I wanted to, to, to clarify. One day movie. soon, guys. One day soon. I was, uh, I think mediocre. Was I telling you this or was I telling my wife? I said, I'm going to go fucking start doing some auditions again just to give these flat earthers something new to talk about. No, see, you told I, me that the other see I, I told you he was an actor. Yeah. Th 
thanks, Mr. Obvious. Something we've talked about here from the beginning. I like movies, dipshits. I'm yeah. I'm not an actor paid by anybody to talk about stocks. I also like stocks. My degree is in economics, finance, and banking. I've been a trader since in my 20s. Dumbasses. It's okay to have things that you like to do outside of trading. doesn't make you that person. I like dancing. That's how I met my wife. Uh, I like acting. Uh, I don't do it because there's no money in it in my town. And these dipshits could never finish their projects. I was in one movie that made it to a, a movie festival. Uh, and what else? Oh, guitar. I'm going to be a failed rock star soon. That'll be the next thing I'm going to hand them to talk about. Oh, man. Candace says, go for it, Tony. I want to watch you in the movies. I, I have. There's some movies out there. If you Maybe one day I'll play them, Candace. There's one that I'm particularly proud of that, that was actually pretty good. And there's one that made it to a movie festival. But I didn't have a speaking part in that movie. You're trying but, to get close to Adam Air and you guys so he can uh, get a movie role. <laughs> I've never been SAG after a, you know, I'm not a, yeah. never done, I've never done a, per, a four pay movie. It was always just for fun because I fucking love it. I love being around it. Even, even these jackasses that can't fucking finish a project, it's still fucking fun. And it challenges me. I, I've told you guys the story like when I first started going to auditions, driving 30 minutes to go to an audition, I wanted to pull my car over and puke. Cause I was so nervous. I'm, I don't like being in the spotlight. I don't like being the center of attention and to go in a room with three people judging you with a script. They just handed you five minutes ago. It's fucking nerve wracking, but I did it to improve myself. Same reason I took dance lessons to improve my myself to not be scared to go out on the dance floor without a drink. And I ended up meeting a beautiful young redhead and mar <laughs> married her seven years later because I took that step of improving myself. And who knows what, maybe I'll meet a blonde when I become a good guitar player, mediocre. <laughs> I'm oh, just man. teasing, but I'm just guys, don't be afraid to challenge yourself to grow. I, I always try and do that. I always have something I'm working on to improve myself. And to, to challenge myself to get out of my comfort zone. I don't know. All right, mediocre. It, it's 10.53. I think we've got seven minutes till the second warning. I like it. I, I didn't hear any comments over there from the other room. So. Uh, Candace she says, I'm in California, so my mom used to take me my and my brother all the time to, on interviews. Was that uh, auditions, Candace? All right, ladies and gents, uh, mediocre. Thank you for your time. It was a good hanging out. Hopefully next week we can get Massalorian back in here. And yeah, this is a good hangout. Good, nice, chill vibe. It was not a bunch of dipshit in the in the chat tonight. It'd be nice to see Mass come back. You know, he's a good dude. I, I met him in person, so yeah, I, I know he's a good dude. Hopefully he gets back. He, he sounds like he's doing good. He seemed like he was very motivated to get his uh, documentary done and, and start hanging out with us next week. So good luck to you, buddy, to get, get that out there. And uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. And I'm sure everybody is looking forward to hearing from you. And uh, Mediocre, I, I think it would be a fucking riot for the three of us to go bust some heads on Rumble doing a political talk show. 
I I want to do that with them. Let's go I fucking knock some too. skulls together. I can't do it on YouTube because I know, I know. You gotta tell me nothing. I know. But as we approach the election, let's go fucking knock some skulls together. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's gonna be interesting. Good night, Anya. Thank you for uh, hanging out with us and helping mod the chat. Good night, Anya. Pam, thank you. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, everyone who tuned in tonight, anyone who's watching on replay, thank you. Sorry if we hurt your feelings, but uh, we try and do nothing but real talk, facts, figures, and financials here. Mediocre, you got any closing comments? I'm tired. I just want to say good night and uh, keep an eye on your portfolios. That's I'm really going to give a round of uh, applause to each and every one of you as we go. And then we're going to play the outro. Mediocre, I'll talk to you in the morning. Good night. Let's go. Yeah. I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit If it moves, gotta grab it Fuse like a magnet, lose, won't have it Till I'm doomed in a casket I ain't playing, got a weird mind If you work eight hours, I'ma work nine If the shit tastes sour, you should taste mine I'ma stay in power for a long time Get up, nah, I ain't a quitter Toss me the ball, I'm a really big hitter Big picture, I'm a straight killer Rass in the song to the highest bidder Got juice, got gas, I'ma move fast New shoes, new tracks, like who's that? I'm new, come back, better than last Yeah, it's a new me, never gonna look back